webinar on uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft Teams is actually known as the uh, digital hub for educators and, and there are many reasons for this. This is one of the uh, biggest um, applications that is currently in use, especially during the pandemic. And there are many uh, Fortune 500 companies. Uh, Fortune 500 companies are companies who has uh, big stocks in the stock market. And a lot of Fortune 500 companies and even educational organizations are very much actively using uh, Microsoft Teams. And there are many reasons for this, uh, which I will show you as part of this uh, workshop. So you are in good hands because um, this will not be my first uh, training. Uh, I've done this uh, continuously since, I think since 2010, uh, uh, when the pandemic first hit uh, Malaysia in early 2010. And also I've done this training in many other organizations. Uh, one of the funny things about this training was uh, uh, th there is one of the universities that I went to and I, I got this training. And you know, in, in UM, we have this LMS, Learning Management System, which is Spectrum, okay? And it's built under the Moodle system. But after I've done this training, one of the universities in, in Malaysia, the private university, uh, they have actually cancelled their Moodle subscription and, and using Teams as an LMS. So that was a totally complete shock for me uh, because uh, I didn't expect that. Uh, uh, but more or less Teams is uh, LMS by itself. If you know how to use it, uh, it's a capable uh, learning management system by itself. So you, you don't have to actually use any LMS or else everything can be done within Teams. But in UM, it's not possible because um, you, you, our KPI is very much tied to Spectrum. Uh, so you are you you need to use Spectrum uh, with Teams. So there must be some form of uh, balancing act along the way. So it's not as uh, straightforward as not using Spectrum and only using Teams. Uh, we need to use both actually. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually a certified uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator (MIE) and also a Microsoft Office um, Specialist Master as well. Uh, let me just take you through the. Uh, program for today. Uh, so we will be looking um, from 9 to 4. Uh, that will be the webinar for today. Uh, so we'll be looking at these are some of the program contents. Uh, we're going to explore Office 365 online especially and we are going to look at very specific applications. Uh, we're going to look at Teams, we're going to look at Microsoft Forms, we're going to look at Sway, uh, we're going to look at Microsoft OneNote. Okay and uh, if you can see that uh, based on this program, uh, Microsoft OneNote uh, will be after Microsoft Teams and the one that the third one best practices for assignments and quiz uh, this one will be exploring Microsoft Forms and once uh, we're going to break for lunch at one to two and after that we are going to see uh, what are the applications that we can use uh, to really enhance our classroom teaching um, especially creatively so now we are in hybrid mode we are transitioning into a hybrid mode very much most of these applications you can still use as part of your teaching learning. If not fully online, uh, you can still use this in a hybrid mode basis, right? So this will be more or less the program, but it's a very fluid uh, in such a way that we will see the momentum of this group. Uh, if there are many Q&A and all this, so there might be some delay and I might need to reshuffle things around. Okay, but we'll definitely um, try to end it by uh, 4 p.m. Okay, so this will be more or less the program for today. Uh, just to let you know, these are uh, certain uh, qualifications that you can get uh, from Microsoft uh, if you are interested to pursue. Uh, these are some of the qualifications that I have. Uh, these are badges, uh, these are batch, uh, batch given by Microsoft. So you will have to sit for a, sorry, not sit, first you have to go through a two full day program from morning to evening, uh, a two full day program on each of these components. So you have PowerPoint for two days, um, Word for two days, Access, uh, Expert Excel for two days. And once you have completed that two days, uh, you will have to sit for an exam uh, by Microsoft. And they will lock your screen, they will lock your computer, there will be an official eventilator from Microsoft in, in Malaysia, they have you and they will come to the test center. So you're supposed to go to the uh, official test center to sit for this exam. And the exam is only for about uh, two hours. And uh, you sit for the exam and if you pass, uh, you get the 
uh, badge and you get a certificate from there. So there are four, four badges altogether. So you have PowerPoint, Word, Access and Expert. And once you complete this uh, four badges, you get the grand one. This is the, the, the master master uh, badge. Okay, and usually you have this badge, so you can even pin it in your code. Lah. So when you go for face-to-face -face training or what, uh, you have this badge and you, you can pin it there. So this one is very hard to get because uh, you need to complete all four. Uh, then you are able to get this uh, badge. And here, uh, along with the badge, it also gives you a certificate. So you even get a very, very nice certificate, something that looks like this. So this is on PowerPoint, and then you have access, then you have Word and you have Excel. And this is actually uh, uh, gold-plated. Uh. This is gold-plated. So they actually post the cert to your home. Uh, and this is actually gold-plated. It's shining. Uh, so it's, it's very, very nice. Very beautiful cert. So once you complete all these uh, four certificates, um, you'll be able to get the Grand Master one. Uh, this is the Specialist Master. And you will only be able to get this cert uh, once you have these four modules together. Uh, Word, Access, PowerPoint, and Excel. All this is stated here. And you also even have a verification uh, code here. Uh, so it's not easy to duplicate because uh, any of your employees who want to certify uh, and, and check whether you're already certified, uh, they are able to use this code uh, to check it online and see whether your name is really a Microsoft Office Specialist Master. So it's not something that um, easily duplicate. So if you're interested in this, you can let me know. I can share with you uh, some of the costing. Uh, I think per cost, Per course of, um, let's say, PowerPoint is about close to 800 ringgit uh, per course. So you have four here, so this is close to about 3,000 plus. Uh, so you, you can invest in this and I, I can tell you that um, it, you have a lot of benefit in return. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can let me know. I, I will be able to share with you the, the details uh, if you want to get yourself certified. Uh, this is something that is more attainable. Uh, something that is more achievable. This is uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator. Uh, you just have to complete some modules online and uh, you have to answer the quiz. And if you get it correctly, uh, answer the quiz all correctly. The quiz is only about half an hour. If you manage to answer all correctly, you will be getting this certificate. Uh, this is a free certificate, so you don't have to pay anything. You just have to access uh, online, complete the module, complete the quiz, you pass it and you will get this Microsoft Innovative Educator. So this is quite a valuable um, certificate and there are many levels after this. Um, so you can get the certificate and among this, you can also get other types of certificate. This is all free. Uh, so you can get Microsoft uh, Forms, for example. Uh, you can get a cert for this. You can get uh, Microsoft Sway. You can get a cert for this. And then you can get Microsoft OneNote and uh, you can also get Microsoft Teams, right? So. All these four sets is actually given to you in a soft copy. Uh, you will have to print it. These sets, they don't post it to your house. Uh, not as the Microsoft uh, Specialist Master one. And that one, they will post it. But all this is done online. Uh, so you, you you can print it out in a hard cut uh, and file it now if you want to. Okay, so these are all uh, soft copy of the sets. So if you are interested, then I can also show you how to get access and complete uh, these modules. Okay. Um, so as part of this morning, uh, I would like to just uh, see what, what is the sort of level of uh, mastery of uh, Office 365 within our group this morning. Uh, because I think uh, Kuhan is also here. Kuhan, I think um, many, many of you, I think perhaps are joining this uh, Microsoft for the first time. Uh, but few of you have joined a few times this Microsoft uh, training. Yeah. Uh, so I know Kuhan. Uh, I think the rest of you are still new, right? Um, so can you please complete this survey? Uh, this is a pre-session survey. Uh, it's just a very short question, just to ask you and and to 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 see what is the sort of uh, competency of our group this morning, so that I know where to put more weightage. Let's say if you already mastered in something, and majority of the group has already mastered something, then I'm not going to spend much time there. I will spend more time on the other components that require more attention. Okay, so can you please scan this? Um, scan using your mobile. Mobile. Uh, there was one workshop I went and the participant complained and said, I cannot scan, I cannot scan. And after that, I realized the participant was using My Sejahtera. <laughs> so yeah, don't scan using My Sejahtera, uh, just scan using the normal uh, barcode scanner. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you some time uh, to complete this. 
and I will check it online also uh, uh, for those who have also completed it. Okay, so I already have one response here. Okay, let me just share the screen of your response. So we can also see together uh, what is the response for the whole group, yeah? So I have about four now. Has really re responded. Okay, we have about eight now. So we have online 18, 18 participants. So only 18 has joined so far out of 40. Yeah? I hope that the others are not too late. Otherwise, they're going to miss out a lot uh, once we have started the whole training. Okay, we have 10, we have 11. So this is using uh, Microsoft Forms um, as compared to Google Forms. Huh? So you can see that uh, uh, the interface and the reporting style is a little bit different than Google Form. Okay, and I will show you some of the features of Microsoft Forms as well. Huh? It's a fantastic application, which is very much underused as compared to Google Form, which seems to be more popular okay but um microsoft forms has its own advantage compared to google form yeah? so we will explore this as well okay so i have about 11 just a few more to have a representative of the group i think there's another seven missing so those who have already responded so you have uh Payment, you have Kuhan, you have Norel, you have Rosna. Okay. These are the names that is really responded so far. So I think I'm waiting for, I think there's someone named Adila here. Adila, I think Adila has not yet responded, yeah? Yeah, sorry, where is the link again? Can you share, Doctor? Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, just a moment. Let me just share. The feedback form? Or? Okay. Oh. Just scan this QR code. Okay, more. Uh, Chandrika, have you responded? I don't see your name here as well. Is, is Chandrika there?
Okay. Uh, let's see what are some of the responses. Okay, I have 13 now. So um, I can see that majority of our group this morning is beginners. Uh, we have about 10. Uh, there are some intermediate users, about three of you all here. Yeah? How frequent do you use the following applications? So uh, I broke it down to few. Uh, we have Teams, we have Sway, you have OneNote, um, you have Office 365 uh, online, and then you have Forms. So I can see Teams that uh there's almost always is only very few yeah and then uh sway wow wow sway is so little usage here for microsoft sway yeah? um let me share with you about sway later i've taught sway to my students and a few staffs yeah and after i taught them about microsoft sway they have forgotten what is Microsoft PowerPoint <laughs> because they all are using Sway now. They don't use PowerPoint anymore. Sway is very much 3D, uh, 3D kind of a presentation. Yeah? Um, so I will show you that later. Okay, OneNote also I can see that quite a number have not used uh, OneNote. Uh, Microsoft Office Online, okay, there's a nice balance here. Microsoft Forms, uh, also not many are using, uh, right? So this will be more or less the, the group dynamics for this morning. Uh, please rate your interest in learning more about the following application. So it looks like majority are very interested to learn about Teams. Microsoft Sway, only 75%. Uh, uh, the rest is somewhat interested. Microsoft OneNote, yes. Uh, Forms, 100% very interested. Okay, and Microsoft Online. So what other applications have you used uh, for your um, online uh, teaching? So I see there are nine responses here. Uh, oh, 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 so we can see that this group is very Google-centric. There's many Google Meet, Google Classroom, Google Meet. Uh, yeah, we have our Spectrum, Google Meet. Oh, oh wow. So overwhelming Google Meet fans here uh, and Google users. Okay, so you're coming this morning to migrate, is it? <laughs> to migrate from Google to uh, Microsoft or to a comparison test mode and see which one is the best uh, to move forward okay okay so thank you very much for those who have already responded uh, to this survey let's uh, move on from this okay um, let me go back to teams all right this morning uh, we are going to learn about microsoft office uh, 365 right so this is actually a cloud uh, uh, um actually subscribe to microsoft 365 cloud cloud applications yeah? so if you're not heard about this i will take you through this and how to actually access uh, microsoft 365 cloud in um, um and under this cloud we actually have many many applications under the cloud you know so you these are some of the uh popular applications that we have there right uh, in uh, all these are free yeah? all this is accessible and all these are free and uh, part of this morning uh we are going to discover some of these applications so i've already uh, put it in uh, circles uh over shape so these are some of the applications that we are going to discover together as part of this workshop so you can see that actually there are many other um, applications i think one so one of the most common one is onedrive uh, OneDrive is very similar to Google Drive, but it's special in its way. Um, you have even Stream. Microsoft Stream is very similar to YouTube, okay, but it's also special in its way. And um, you have even SharePoint. So these are some of the common uh, popular applications and even have Power Apps. So this takes some time to build, but once you have done the programming, everything is automated. Uh, so this is also something that for you to uh, discover Power Automate and also power apps. Uh, these are very, very powerful applications to uh, do very nice visual presentation in terms of data and also to automate, uh, uh, make your work processes automatic. So those who are doing admin uh, will be interested in this part. OK, so we are going to uh, uh, look at these applications that I have circled. And what are some of the main features of uh, Office 365? So something for us to take note that um, the current version in uh, Office 365 under UM is actually Microsoft Office 2019. And you can install it in your own personal device. And you can even install it up to five licenses. So you have five free licenses that you can download and you can activate and install. Uh, and these five licenses, you can spread it across. 
um, any laptop, desktop, Mac that you have. You even have license for tablet. You even have license for smartphone. All right. So I will strongly encourage uh, our lecturers here uh, when you have your uh, Microsoft document and say product activation fail. You have a red color bar on top of your Microsoft Word or any of the Microsoft documents. You have product activation fail uh, red color bar there. You can actually download Office 365 for free and get that activated. Um, so uh, please do that. If you're not sure how, you can let me know. I will show you how uh, to download because it doesn't look very nice that when you share your screen or you present, uh, it looks a red color bar there. Uh, product activation field okay where else uh, you already have it for free here okay so when you buy a new laptop uh, one of the common things the computer shop will ask you is do you want this um, office uh, Microsoft Office together they will sell it for 200 300 kid you don't have to buy that because it's already given free for you here uh, you can download it into your own device and you can use it uh, is uh, unlimited usage here and uh, in office uh, online you even have online versions of word uh, PowerPoint, you have Excel and OneNote. Uh, here we are also given uh, Microsoft Outlook, which is uh, email, okay, but uh, you have up to 50 GB, yeah? 50 GB that you can use. But many of us in UM, we are already using the Google because our uh, our UM mail is based on a Google platform. Uh, so the, the, the way of emailing and all this is very much Google based. So we are already using a, a, a Google based uh, platform, but uh, you also have an Outlook um, 365 here uh, with a 50 GB inbox if you want to use it. And of course, the OneDrive, this is the most valuable one. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive, you have one terabyte. Uh, so recently, UM has already given PTM, Pusat Technology Maklumat, uh, they uh, has already given a directive that we need to downsize uh, we need to trim our Google storage. So each account is now only given 15 GB, 15 GB. So if you are more than that, they might suspend your account. Um, so what is the alternative? Um, you can uh, consider Microsoft OneDrive. It's already given to you free. In Microsoft OneDrive, you have one terabyte, which is so big of a space uh, as compared to the Google Drive now, which we are only uh, uh, allowed to have up to. 15 GB. So this will be another alternative for you uh, if you uh, you can migrate over to Microsoft OneDrive. So I will uh, suggest to you to take advantage of the one terabyte OneDrive. There are many of the lecturers here that I'm already assisting to migrate uh, from Google Drive to OneDrive. So it's just a matter of uh, migrating whatever you have documents from uh, Google Drive into OneDrive. Yeah. So this is also a cloud-based storage similar to Google Drive. Uh, where you can store all this kind of uh, work related matters and all this yeah and uh, since that is a cloud-based technology uh, ptm uh, is not responsible for any document backup uh, so just take note yeah so if anything happens to your even your google drive or your OneDrive, ptm is not able to do anything because why uh, they are not responsible for any document backup uh, and what are some of the eligibility and terms? Uh, how do you access and how do you use it? And uh, what are the terms and conditions? So firstly, um, all UM staff and students who have a UM mail and CISO mail account, they can access Microsoft Office 365. Uh, so this is free given to them. Huh? So they only need to know uh, what is their username and password for their UM mail and CISO mail account. And this one, you can use it um, until the student graduate or no longer enroll or even you are no longer employed at UM. So you can continuously use it. Uh, it's not it's not a problem. Huh? And there is uh, definitely no to share your Office 365 plan to others. So I've also known some uh, of our UM staffs uh, who got this free access and they have downloaded it and uh, given to their um, relatives uh, because their relatives doesn't have the office 365 plan uh, so they have a limited license so uh, since the license is expired they have shared their office 365 because you can have up to five users uh, this is uh, highly not recommended because all the uh, license is only to um staff and students because when they use your keyword uh, sorry not keyword if they use your uh, license key they are going to get your name. Your name is going to appear on their application. Uh, so this is why it's not recommended because anything they do, your name is going to be there. Your name is going to be tagged. 
so you have to be very careful on uh, just sharing your licenses across to anyone. Uh, so it's not recommended only for your usage. And here you can also access uh, and get to know about Office 365 more uh, from the UM software website. So this is the link uh, here. You can go to this URL and you can even check out um, uh, how to access Office 365 and what are some of the usage and capabilities uh, through this link. So I will share uh, this link uh, to you as well. And if there's any problem, if you cannot log in to uh, Office 365, you can launch a help desk ticket at um, helpdesk at um.edu.my uh, if you are not able to log into Office 365. So how do you actually access uh, Office 365? This will be some of the ways. So for staffs, this will be the information that you need. Uh, for students, you want to give to your students, this is the information that your students need. So you need to give them the URL. Uh, for your students, for example, the URL is the same. This URL and this URL is the same. So you need to give them this link so that they are able to access. So if you go to this link, it will prompt you to log in to your uh, CISWA or UM mail. So here you have to put your username. It's the exact same as your UM mail. The only difference is we add 365. See, so it's like Donny Adams at um.edu.my. That's my UM mail. The only difference is I add 365 here. The password is the same. Uh, the password is the same as the UM mail. So for the students, uh, they also have username at siswa.um.edu.my. So they only add 365 here. Some students, they make the mistake. They put siswa.365.com. UM. So if you do that, then your login is wrong and you're not able to log in. So you must have add siswa365. So there's no dot in between here. siswa365.um.edu.my and they enter in their password for their siswa mail and then they are able to access Office 365. All right. Okay. So can you all try to access the Office 365? Um, how do you access is you have to go to Microsoft online. Go to Microsoft Online. Just Google Microsoft Online. Okay, and here you will have Office 365 login. So this will be your Office 365 login. So can you all try to access that now? Uh, click Office 365 login. Okay, so in my case, I have already logged in, yeah? Um, so you are able to see my document that looks something like this. Uh, I'm, I'm already logged in. But uh, for you that is logging on for the first time, you will be prompted to uh, uh, enter in your username and your password. Okay. So can you all do that now and see, are you all able to access? Anyone having a problem? Can you let me know in the chat? Okay, so I see there's some chat here. All right. What could be used in Microsoft Teams to replace Kahoot? From what I experienced, Kahoot only allows 50 per, uh, participants at a certain time. Uh, okay, Adila, uh, Microsoft Teams uh, not able to replace Kahoot is not possible because Kahoot is actually a gamified quiz, uh, whereas Teams doesn't have that gamified um, uh, what an interface where you have music and then you have score, uh, uh, you know, people competing with one another, you have a trophy presentation and all this. Uh, Teams does not have that capability. Okay, so it's not able to replace Kahoot. Uh, where else there is another application I will show you later in the afternoon, uh, which can be an alternative to Kahoot. Okay. All right. So everyone able to access um, Office 365. Eh? If you're able to access, you should be getting an interface that looks something like this. Uh, this is my documents, lah, of course. Okay. But uh, you'll be coming. You can see the UM logo here. University of Malaya Office. So you're already in. Okay, so uh, let's first look at Microsoft 
Teams. So Teams is a digital hub for educators and students. Huh? And uh, this is a very, very nice, uh, cool application. Let's see a very short video about Microsoft Teams and uh, before we explore further about Microsoft Teams. Huh? So this is just a short video. Uh, let's see what is Microsoft Teams capable of doing for us, especially educators. Microsoft Teams is the digital hub that teachers and school leaders have been waiting for. It provides a conversation-based workspace in which teachers and students can experience a personalized, vibrant learning environment, as well as having many of the classroom basics, like assignments, announcements, and notebooks. Ultimately, students learn valuable life skills of collaboration and communication by using Microsoft Teams. It is also the perfect location for working with colleagues on projects, curriculum adoptions, or even whole school initiatives. School administrators can communicate and collaborate with their entire staff in one location. Okay, so this is a very short video about Microsoft Teams and what it's capable of doing. Yeah? Um, so let's look at some of the uh, capabilities of Microsoft Teams in a visual aspect. So here we can see that these are some of the main core functions of Microsoft Teams. We are able to communicate just like WhatsApp. So if you are using WhatsApp and you are using Google Meet, Microsoft Teams combines both functionalities together. So Microsoft Teams, you can just chat just like a WhatsApp, just exactly like this. And you even have a mobile application. So for me, when uh, during my classes, uh, for my students, we actually don't have a WhatsApp group because all of us are actually using the Microsoft Teams application. And you can send messages, you can send documents, you, any pictures or anything that you can do in WhatsApp. You can even call um, the same thing that you can do in Microsoft Teams. So it's a one platform for both, uh, both for uh, online meetings and you can even chat. Uh, in there, okay, and you also can collaborate together. There are many applications I will show you. You can customize your uh, teams, and also here it enables you to work with confidence because it's very security. Yeah, so you're it's not easy to hack into this account. So th this will be some of the interface of Microsoft Teams. Um, other than that, you can also use it as a chat uh, platform. All right, uh, similar to uh, WhatsApp. Okay, everything is there. You even have emoticons. Uh, you can even send emoticons, you can send GIFs, you can send pictures, you can send documents, everything is inside here. So it works exactly the same as uh, 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 WhatsApp and you can even use it across mobile, you can use it across desktop, you can even use it across many types of browser. Uh. So now you have even Microsoft Edge as a browser. So this is something that you can uh, take note of. Uh, so this is some interface of Microsoft Teams, so you can chat using different different you can even use a uh, text you can use emoticon you can use a sticker you can use a gif uh, so it's exactly the same as a, a whatsapp message you can even send one to one not necessarily just uh, to a group you can even send one to one messages individual person uh, exactly like in a whatsapp so you can even do this and on top of that microsoft teams enables you to communicate through meetings so apart from just the chat you are able to even use it uh, to have online meetings just like what we are doing now uh, you can have a one-to-one -one meeting you can have a group meeting okay you can have it recorded so now in uh, um uh, they have already removed the recording feature for google meet uh. so google meet now we cannot record and one of the reason why they remove the recording is because uh, they want to downsize they want to trim the size because uh, they ask that every account must only be 15 gb but uh, looks like it's not reducing as what they wanted. So they have canceled that recording uh, 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 feature. So Microsoft Teams enables you to record uh, and it's stored straight into an application called Microsoft Stream. Uh, Stream will have that video. Once you finish recording, it will store there. So this is something that for you to take note is an alternative uh, to the recording of Google Meet. Uh, so you can also um, meet in uh, Microsoft Teams and here you can meet anywhere uh, so anywhere you can just dial in and you can just on and it's very very simple you don't have to create links and all this uh, like Google Meet each time you want to meet you want to create link you create link create link so Microsoft Teams you don't actually have to do that 
so there's just one touch button and you are able to meet online. I will show you later on how we're going to do this. Yeah, And here you can also collaborate across. Many, many people can collaborate across in Teams, uh, unlike Google Meet. So here you are actually chatting and also you are able to meet everyone in one time. And here you can also use many, many different applications. And one of the best thing about Microsoft Teams is you are able to customize and extend. So these are some of the other third party application like Adobe. Uh, then you have other application like Evernote. So all these kind of application you are able to customize. So you even have a calendar in Teams that looks very, very uh, professional and a lot of reminders and a lot of important updates that can be customized in Teams. So if you know how to use it, it's actually a very, very powerful um, application. These are some other applications that you can link to Microsoft Teams. All these applications are quite popular, Adobe and all this. And you see this is the entire Microsoft 365 suite. Uh, where you have all the applications, the common applications. So the one that we always heard of is uh, PowerPoint, uh, Excel, Word, and then uh, Microsoft OneNote is uh, now coming up. So you, all these applications can be linked uh, to Microsoft Teams. Even for third-party applications, you can even link to Microsoft Teams. Uh, for example, if I want to start a Kahoot quiz, uh, I can even provide that link in Microsoft Teams. I can link it to my class and the students can play within uh, Microsoft Teams. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And I will show you how we do it yeah, along the way. We will practice doing this. Um, here, you can use Microsoft Teams most importantly to manage um, remote learning. So you have it across many other devices. You can manage your remote learning through Teams. And also, you can download Microsoft Teams um, application into your mobile. And it's compatible. You have a mobile app that's compatible across, across Apple. Uh, against Android, and if you're using a Windows-based uh, machine and mobile, it's also compatible across three major platforms. Huh? So you can uh, take note and go and search for this application so that you can also use Teams uh, in your mobile and most importantly, you use it as a WhatsApp also. So you can chat with your students and all this just like a WhatsApp. Okay, So you don't have to create a separate WhatsApp group when everything can be done within Teams. Okay, So we're going to do a little bit of hands-on um as part of this workshop and then uh, we will uh, go as you i'll take on question as it goes huh? so feel free to ask me any questions you you want or you can stop me during the the session uh or you can post it in the chat yeah okay so now let's first uh, access teams yeah? uh, so in your 365 dashboard um, you go to this application you can see on your left you have few application so I'm going to click Teams. So Teams is here. So if you don't see Teams here, you can click this grid here, and this grid will bring you to many other applications that you have here. So if you click all apps, um, you can see that this is all the applications that you have under uh, Microsoft 365. See, so many, and all these are free. Yeah? All these are free, and many, many are not aware about this. Um, so let's go for Microsoft Teams. So it's already nicely uh, put according to alphabetical order, so it's easy for you to scroll and find. So I'm going to find Teams here. So once you click Teams, you are going to go into the Microsoft Teams um, application that looks something like this. Okay, so now you are into Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, now, if you, you see that in Microsoft Teams, you have few tabs here. You have the activity, you have the chat, you have the teams, you have the assignment, you have the calendar and few others. So I'm going to go to teams here. Okay, and that will bring you to the main interface. So here, if you're using teams for the first time, um, a lot of this is going to be empty. Uh, so you can see that I'm using teams quite a lot. Uh, so that's why I have a lot of groups. This is like your WhatsApp group. Uh, you each group, you have your own WhatsApp group and your own class. So you can see that I have a lot of things here because I'm, I'm using Teams quite a lot. Um, so in your case, if you are using it for the first time, uh, you will not be able to um, see anything like this. So yours is going to be empty, right? So uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new team. So if you see at the bottom here, uh, you have join or create a team. Join or create a team. So can you click this? and you are going to get 
an interface that looks something like this. Create a team, join a team with code. All right. These are other groups lah, uh, that uh, is already available, but we're just going to focus on this. Create a team, join a team with code. Okay. So this one I will show you later. Uh, what is join a team with code? Um, let's focus on create a team first. Okay. So click create team. Okay. When you click create team, you are going to get four interfaces. One, two, three, four. Four interfaces. So you can, um, the rest of the interface, even though they give you other options, this is just a very fanciful name. Lah. More or less, the functions are all the same. So you don't have to trouble yourself to see, okay, uh, which, which, which category that I fall into. Uh, more or less, the functions are all the same. So I will just go and straight away create a team uh, under class. So click class. Okay, now you can give your team a name. Okay, what name? Uh, so uh, this can be labeled across your course code. It can be labeled across your course name. It's up to you what kind of name they're going to put. Huh? So I'm, I'm just going to put my Microsoft uh, 365. And this is the group that I'm going to put, my Microsoft 365. Okay, and you can leave this description empty. You can click next. Okay, now Teams is already creating the group. Now, this is the part where you can put your student's name here. So, uh, all our students under UM is already having an uh, Office 365 application, right? So, how do they access the Office 365 is the same thing as how you access the Microsoft Office online. So, they have to log in into Office 365 log, uh, online using the CISWA and the username password. And then, go and search for the application Teams. Then, they will come to this same interface that where we are now, all right? So now under this interface, okay, let me let me just go back here. Okay, so now under this interface that we have now, you have Office uh, 365. Um, we can add a member here. So now you can search for your students. Uh, your, all your students' name is here. Um, so for example, uh, any of the names you can type here. For example, I'm going to type maybe, okay, what's uh, the first one? Uh, maybe let me try so you will return this student. So a uh, student account will write student. Okay, if it's not a, uh, don't, you don't have a student there, means that uh, probably it's a staff. It's an admin staff or an academician, right? So if a student account, you will write student here. So you can search for your student easily. It'll come out like this. But just imagine this, if you have a small class, it's okay. But if you have a class of 30, 40, 60, 100 students, uh, uh, you can't be expected to type all your students' name one by one. Uh, uh, this is the hard working way. There is another lazy way of doing things. Huh? It's shortcut, huh? lazy way of doing things. I will show you the shortcut, okay? So you can either type all your students' name here. Now you also have teachers. Now let's say in the course, uh, you are co-teaching co co -teaching with another lecturer. So you can even add the lecturer's name inside here. So for example, uh, I have Lim, Lim Siu Ha. So I can maybe put Lim uh, Siu Ha. So you can see that Lim Siu Ha profile is already here. So the entire UM community have a 365 application, right? So you can, I just add uh, Lim Siu Ha here as my co-teacher and she will be my co-teacher in the class. This is how easy it is to add the name, yeah? All right, so I'm going to leave this empty and I, I'm going to click uh, close just like that. Okay, now you have here on your left, the group has been created. Uh, the Teams has been created, my Microsoft uh, 365, okay? So now, what are we going to do is, under this one, you can see that on top here, there are many tabs. you got files, okay, and then you have uh, class notebook. This is, no class notebook is basically your class one note. Huh? And then you have your assignments. Okay, you can even do assignments here. And even you have even grading. So once the student has already submitted the assignment, you can even grade it here and you have few other tabs here. So these are some important information yeah, uh, that you have here. You can uh, access this. So we'll go through it one by one. Yeah. So now let's go to post. Post, you will get a window that looks something like this. So you can start a new conversation here. So you start a new conversation and you are able to type uh, whatever uh, notes or whatever announcement, whatever file that you want to share, uh, any emoji, any GIFs, uh, stickers you want to share across just like a WhatsApp, you are able to do this. 
see so it's exactly the same all right so now i'm going to invite um, all of you to come into my microsoft 365 all right and how am i going to do that is this will be the shortcut okay let me see there's a question here how to avoid other member in the teams to add more channel that misled others okay okay good question yeah i i'm coming to that okay first let me show you uh how to go to the settings part so if you see in microsoft 365 here there is this three dots here okay you click the three dots you are going to go to manage team manage team so click manage team and under this manage team you are able to see who is the group admin uh, in in this case is the owner uh, uh, microsoft call it the owner but i think in whatsapp we have a more familiar name called admin so who is the group admin so you are the group admin here and this is the members inside the group so once you already add them their name is going to come up here all right so this is the members now uh, uh to answer uh payments question uh, so you can go under settings here okay and you have many many settings here so you can see here member permission member permission so enable channel creation adding apps and more you see allow members to create and update channels so here you if you take it means that people can create uh and add more channels if you don't take it means that they cannot they cannot create uh only you can create as the admin so if you find there's a problem then go and check your settings and and don't take this don't take this so that they are not able so there are many things that you can do here so this is allow members to create channel uh delete uh and then remove applications uh create and remove tabs you know they, they can even give members the option to delete messages you know so if you don't want this to be affected you can change you can customize this according to your liking uh, according to your what you want and then here you see guest permission there is also guest permission here guests is basically those who don't have 365 account let's say they have gmail they have hotmail they have yahoo all these are considered as guests um if you have siswa 365 365 and um all these are not guests all these are microsoft users but if they have other emails uh, gmail hotmail yahoo whatever emails then automatically they are considered as a guest uh, because they have not used a microsoft account right so you can see that these are also some to enable you uh, guest permission. You are seeing a blank here because I don't have any guests. Once I have a guest account here, I've added students from uh, Gmail, Yahoo, and all this, this will be activated. So now it's empty, it's it's great. Okay, so I'm going to give you a shortcut. Huh? Uh, you can see something called team code. Team code. So can you uh, put a drop down here? So what is this here? share this code so people can join the team directly you won't get join requests okay so note this one guests won't be able to join with a team code so for you to use this shortcut all right uh, your students must first log into microsoft 365 online and go to teams once they have done that then you can share the team code to them all right so i'm going to share the team code to all of you so you've already logged into 365 I'm going to share the team code to you and you are going to join me in this group called my Microsoft 365. So how am I going to do that? This is the shortcut. So earlier I showed you that you can add your students one by one manually. Yeah? Uh, but let's say if you have a, a big class, it's going to be very time consuming. So what you can do is you can click generate. Generate. And you have a code here. So this is the code that you need to give your students to join. So I'm going to give you this code here. You can take note of this code here. So I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay, so you see the code there. Okay, it's in black. You can put the code there. Now, if you are in the class, this is even cool. So if you're in the class, you can just on your teams, teach your student to join 365 online, and you can even put this a uh, full screen. So it's going to appear like this, a full screen. So you can project it. So all your students just have to enter in this code uh, for them to join your class, right? So where where do they enter in this code? How do they join this class? Is now you see earlier um, this is the option join or create team, join or create team. So if you go back here and click this one, you will come back to the two option 
So earlier we put create a team, right? Now we are going to put join a team with a code. Join a team with a code. So this one. So can you enter in the code? So you have OZU9NAS. You click this one, you are able to join the team. So can you all do that? So that we, then later on I will show you how it works, yeah? Okay, so if you want to see your members, how, you want to see who is in your group, how do I do that? Anyone can recap? This is my group, my office 365, so I want to see who is in my group. How do I do that? How to check the members of the group? Go to manage team, manage members. Okay, good. So click this one and go to manage team. All right. And then you have under members and guests. So you see owners I, is me. Now members and guests, I have 10. So if you click the drop down and you are able to see all your students are inside here. See? So this is how easy it is to get into teams so if you give the code uh, your students are able to join uh, so this is the much easy way uh, to join now let's see if they don't have a 365 account or they're having a problem i will um, ideally tell them okay uh no uh, uh nini i suggest to add the code don't share the link uh. the link is always problematic uh, please only use the code the code is the best uh, option uh. okay uh, usually, if they have problem with uh, 365 and they are not able to join, right? So what I will suggest is uh, you can add them as a guest. But I will always will uh, suggest that you ask them to try to fix it. Email to help us and try to fix it. Don't let the problem remain uh, because uh, they are not able to use the full functionality of 365. So if you are a guest, you're not able to use the full functionality. So now under my Microsoft 365 here, uh, you can temporarily add them. So add them as a member, right? But they are going to appear as guests. So for example, I'm going to put Donny uh, Adams at gmail.com. So you can see that Gmail is automatically classified as a guest because it's not a Microsoft account. So you can temporarily add them, but they will not be able to use the full functionality. So this is not recommended. Uh, unless it's really necessary at that moment, uh, then you can add them, okay? So, uh, once you add them, tell them to go to their email. Go to their email and they are able to access Microsoft Teams from their email. So, tell them to go and check their email uh, and access it through their email. Okay, uh, Nordini says, I didn't see setting step when I click manage team, okay? So, you just click this one, click manage team all right you will have the steps here pending channels settings this is the setting step can odini uh, is here the setting step here go to click this one manage team then you have settings okay all right so No, Dini, yes. Uh, uh, Noel, yes. Uh, uh, no, Dini, you can't see this in my group because I am the one who created the group. All right. But uh, if you create your own group, you will be able to see the settings. Okay. What Noel said is right because I am the owner of the group. So you cannot go and disturb my settings because this is my settings. But when you create your own group, you are able to see that. All right. Okay. So this is how you add your, your students uh, manually yeah, uh, through the guest. Okay. So now here, if you go back to uh, uh, general, so you have a tab here called general. So this is basically the main chat of the class, right? 
So under this general here, uh, you can see that if you put the plus sign, this is a plus sign. So you click the plus sign here. There are many, many other applications which you can link to uh, Microsoft Teams. So you can see that you've got Excel, Forms, OneNote, PDF, so many other applications you have. Uh, and then you even have all these other applications. So if uh, many of these applications are not familiar, you can Google on them. What is uh, 360 Tours? What is Adobe.i? Uh, I know Acrobat, you're very familiar already. Uh, what is Agile Task Board? So all these applications you can uh, scroll through. All this is already under Teams. So you can already immediately use it. All this is already under. So you can see there's so many applications and you can really customize and make it very powerful. You can even link YouTube. So if you have a YouTube video for your class, you can even link YouTube to that. Right, so everything is there. Everything is inside here. So you can slowly explore and check. Uh, these are some of the main uh, documents. Okay, this is in terms of customizing your application for uh, Microsoft 365. Okay, now the next one that you uh, want to be taking note of is called channel. This is channel. This is basically your subgroup. Subgroup. Okay, so you have the first channel called general. I am going to create more channels now. So I'm going to click these three dots here. Okay, and I'm going to click add channel. Add channel. Okay, now what is channel actually? A channel is actually a subgroup under the main group. So your main group is called My Microsoft 365. Now you can even add channels uh, in various ways. So one of the ways that I use channel in my class is uh, you can even create channel according to the class topics. So maybe I'm going to put week one introduction introduction to Microsoft 365. So here you can even create by weekly. You can create the channels according to week, right? Uh, so you can uh, forget about the description here. Now you take note of this privacy, yeah privacy okay uh, i'm going to leave this as it is so you can see standard everyone on the team can access so i'm going to click add so what is going to happen is you have a subgroup under this so you see week one introduction so what is the difference general is basically a, a platform where anyone can chat but let's say if you want to monitor their teaching and learning and their chat in a specific week so under week one they can also chat here. So new conversation. So you can chat, you can send documents, they can, they can uh, the students can do anything here. And this is goes by week. You can even program it that way. Now, another way you can use channel is to break your group, uh, break your students according to group. For example, I'm going to put here, add channel. Okay, now I am going to put maybe uh, group one. Okay. Now, when you put group one, you have to change the privacy here. That means this channel is only accessible to group one members. Let's, so let's say group one, you have about four or five members. Only these group members can see and access this chat. All other students cannot access. So you want them to meet, you want them to discuss and exchange materials all, you can do that within this channel. So for example, I'm going to put group one, now privacy, I am going to change this to private because why only certain members can access. So group one, only group one members can access. So I'm going to put private, specific teammates have access. Okay, now if I create this one, it's going to ask you which specific members. So you see the difference. Earlier, it, this box didn't appear. This box didn't appear. It straight away created a channel. But now it is private. Uh, this is very specific to certain number of students. So now let's see if I'm going to put um, Anis, for example. I see Anis is here. Anis, and then I click add. Okay, so Anis is going to be my group one uh, member. Nobody else can access except for Anis. So I'm going to click done. Now you can see that group one, there's lock, lock, uh, padlock here. Padlock means that it's a lock group. So even though it's here, people cannot access it. Only you as the lecturer can access this. So this is how we use channel. Uh, so you can create channel according to the class uh, topic or you can even create channel according to the group. So this is a very, very useful thing 
uh, if you want the students to work collaboratively in a group and, and to store and here in channel they can even store their files see all the files here you can even have the option to store their files so any powerpoint or document that they are working together can also be stored here and you as the lecturer you can click and even monitor what they are doing here all right so this is another very useful feature so this is what we call channels okay everyone okay can can follow so far can follow you all can uh, you can put it in the chat okay yep okay ifang can follow how about the rest ah huh? everything okay so far can follow okay yes okay so this is about creating channel huh? all right now i i will also like to show you some of the things that you can do in 365 once you on the meeting once you on the microsoft teams meeting you are going to get an interface like this uh where we all are okay i'm going to stop sharing screen now uh, okay you're going to get a screen that looks something like this where you see all the students here and then you see the chat and all this right so this is when you on the meeting when you on the meeting uh now this is some of the things that i can share with you uh, uh that you can encourage uh interactivity with your students okay uh, you can encourage them to to respond to you like what i'm doing now i ask you a question okay everyone can follow me uh you all are putting in the chat okay yes yes okay yep so far so good and all this right now there are many other things that you can do uh to encourage interactivity among your students one of the best features in teams is using the chat now this uh chat in teams is very different than um, all the other applications like uh, cisco webex you have zoom you have google meet the teams chat is uh, a little bit more unique in such a way that uh, you can use many of the basic tools here to encourage interactive um, interactivity with your students okay for example yeah um, i'm going to share my screen okay so now if you go to uh, teams here uh, you are able to see that there is a chat function here this is a chat function huh? so all of you are already responding through the chat function here now in the chat function you will see that there is a emoji emoticon here okay you have an emoji emoticon now all the emojis are here now what is so unique about teams is each of these emoji has a very specific label and name if you take your mouse and hover over the emoji you will see there is a label you see there's nodding uh, so this emoji is saying nodding now if i go and hover over this one you see this is upside down face okay and then if you hover over this you have angel so what usually i will do is to check whether my students are online and whether they are listening to uh, the lecture i would just stop uh, for example like now i will stop uh, briefing and i'll tell them okay let's all uh, use an emoji now if you understand what i'm teaching and you can follow you can understand find for me that emoji that says uh, fingers cross fingers cross you see so they have to actually go and hover over and see which one is actually fingers cross huh? so they go over this way oh, okay this one oh this is fingers cross okay so i'm gonna put fingers cross and then i'm gonna put and uh, so this is how you can play with the emoji in teams because the teams in emoji um, has a specific label so your students has to respond to that okay by you say i want you to find specifically one type of emoji fingers crossed so your student have to go and hover over right so now you can know if the student is not responding or giving you a wrong emoji most probably they're not paying attention uh, so can you all give me an emoji can you try post an emoji which emoji that best represents your mood this morning <laughs> okay so you're clapping there you see so this emoji is very different huh, than uh, you can see uh, as compared to other application because it has motion yes motion you see so be, when you immediately put there you have a motion of it the emoji is actually has some some movements there lah, huh? so you can see so this is very much different than what we have in the conventional chats from other application uh, i think there's somebody raised hand is it 
Rusla, you have a question, is it? Any question, Rusla, or accidentally? Okay, so this is how we play with emoji. Okay, now other things that you can add uh, in Microsoft Teams is something that, okay, using iPad, okay. So one of the other things you can use in, uh, in Teams is use GIF, GIF. So you see there's GIF, GIF, so click GIF. Now GIF uh, is, what is GIF? GIFs are uh, motion pictures. That means pictures where you have movements here. So you can find any GIFs here and you can enter that, you know. So I will put, uh, uh, I will sometimes in between I tell my students, you know, okay, uh, find for me a GIF on laughing. Uh, find a nice laughing uh, GIF and enter it into the chat. Ah, so now, for example, I'm going to put this GIF. All right. So you can enter in and then you can see that the GIF has been entered in. All right. And you can see there's a motion of laughing there. So can you all try to find a GIF? Ah, so Sutami already have a GIF there. Okay. What other GIFs that you like, you can find. So there are many things that you can, uh, different, different GIFs. Ah, I see Abdul Ghani. Ah, so there's a lot of love. Okay, there's a Noor Dini. Ah, you see there's uh, the Jerry, yeah, Jerry. Jerry is uh, laughing there, right? So you can try what other GIFs you have here. How about GIF Sleepy, Sleepy, Sleepy GIF. Ah, let's see what Sleepy GIFs comes out. Ah, this one. Other sleep, uh, other GIF, the sleepy pun ada. <laughs> so you have this uh, baby, okay, then you have this this motion, okay, nice, okay. Uh, you see, so this is the thing that you can play for. This is to encourage lah. This is to encourage, ah, uh, see Azizi, tengok dah, dah mengantuk dah. So, <laughs> so this is the, this is the GIF that you can play with your students. Uh. Make your class. Uh, a bit interesting and fun, you see. So you don't have this GIF um, in uh, other, um, like Google Meet, you don't have it in Zoom, uh, Cisco, Webex. So only Teams gives you this ability, you know. So if you can uh, do your class in a very creative manner, you can use GIF, emoticon, use it to your advantage. So take some ideas and uh, do some creative lessons um, out of this, you know, so that your students also enjoy it. Now, the other things that you can do is, uh, for example, uh, you can even have uh, stickers here. Okay, now this is GIF. Okay, now you even have stickers. See, if you click the, 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 the three dot here, you have sticker. So sticker actually gives you a range of other stickers that you can use. So there are many, many types of stickers. You can see which one that is applicable for you. Lah. So you even have a sticker here, for example. Ah, so somebody is frank. So maybe now is lunchtime. Ah, you can tell. Ah, okay, now we're going to break for lunch. Ah, then you can put a sticker of a uh, lunch here. Something that is something is fine. So there are many things that you can do. So you even have stickers here. Okay, but stickers is actually less popular as compared to uh, emoticons and GIFs. Okay, so you can even try that. So you can diversify. Lah, diversify your classroom. Ah, you see, like Nora has put a uh, cherry there. So you can diversify your classroom and put uh, different, different. Uh, that's a nice picture of a crayon there uh, by uh, Chantri. Ka, yeah? So you can even use um, stickers as part of your classroom lessons. Now, one thing that I really like about Teams is another ability uh, uh, to engage your students. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Uh, um, I'm going to tell uh, I'm going to ask you a question. How do you feel this morning? Can you all put in the chat? How do you feel this morning? You feel happy, you feel sad, you feel sleepy. How do you feel this morning? Just put it in text form. You can just type it, you can put it in text form. Okay, so Suha says uh, she's excited, okay. Excellent, okay. Any other responses? How, how you feel this morning? Good. Ah, okay. Then you have nervous, you have happy, you have fresh, you have energetic. Okay, I feel good. Okay, nice. So now, what is the best part about Teams? Uh, uh, you can see that 
everyone has already given a response, right? Energetic, nice, good, happy and all this. So now can you go through your friends' responses, all the response that we see in the chat? Can you take your mouse and hover over the response? So if you go over the response, you will see there is an icon here. There is a thumbs up, there's love, there's smiley, uh, there's laughing and all this. Give a thumbs up to the comment that you like the best. So maybe I'm going to give a thumbs up to energetic. Ah, so give look at all your friends' responses. Fresh. Okay, good. So I'm going to give a thumbs up to fresh. Okay, uh, energetic. Okay, I'm going to give it here. Uh, nervous. Uh, nervous. I'm going to put a shock here. Ah, uh, surprise. I'm going to put a surprise here for nervous. Uh, what happened? Uh, nervous. Okay. So good. Yeah, I'm going to put a thumbs up here. So can you go and look through all your friends' responses and see what, what is the answer? Okay, excited. Ah, excited, right? Okay, and then what else? Excellent, yes, excellent. Okay, and then what else do you have here? Good, nice, energetic, great. Okay, good. So you can even put great. Okay, so you can uh, like your friends' comments or you can put the heart, for example, or anything else. Now, what is the best thing about this? You can immediately brainstorm, you know, you can immediately brainstorm. So let's see, okay, come across. Uh, what is the rest responses, okay, across all your students? So let me see, okay, I have three, I have two, I have three, 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 uh, five people have re uh, reacted here. Three surprise and two smiling, uh, two here, three, four. Ah, this one is five, four plus one, four. So now if you hover over the mouse, you are able to see which student has given a thumbs up. So you got me, uh, Yifang, you got Sharoja, and you got Sutarmi. Who has given a love here? Okay, Nordini. So now you can immediately ask your student, okay, uh, Chantriga, it seems that your answer seems to be the most popular. Everybody likes your answer. So can you explain to uh, uh, the class uh, why did you write that answer? You know, can you explain to us? Uh, what is the meaning behind your answer? So immediately you can start discussion with your students, you know. You so your so Chantrika is going to tell this. Okay, I did this or what? So now you can go and hover over, and now you can even say, okay, Yifang, I say Yifang, you also like Chantrika's answer. Uh, Sharoja, you also like uh, Chantrika's answer. Sutarmi, you also like. So can you explain to us why you choose Chantrika's answer? Why do you like her answer? Uh, so you can immediately start a discussion immediately like that, you see. So this is something that also teams have that other applications don't have. And it's very value added, you know. I always use this in my class to immediately start with brainstorming and to immediately start a discussion, you know. So this is what they call reaction. Reaction. So they react to yeah, the answer that you give. So this is something that to encourage um, student participation and collaboration. So you can see that, okay, who are the active students? Okay, only these students. So what happened to the rest? Uh, the rest of the students are all missing. Okay, so you can see. Okay, how many students are here? Is it the same person or you got different, different students responding? So here also you can check whether the students are following you or are they somewhere else uh, watching Netflix or maybe Facebook or doing something else. Uh, so you can even check the student inter uh, students engagement with you in the class in this way. Okay. Is it okay? Everyone uh, can follow this one so far? Awesome. <laughs> I think you all can unmute also. La. You all can unmute also and ask. La. If you all have any questions, la, you can unmute and ask also. La. You can even respond. Uh, sometimes online teaching can get a little bit uh, lonely uh, because you're only talking to a computer. <laughs> Okay, so so you can even unmute and, and answer. Huh? Okay, so that's awesome. Yeah, you got all that uh, icons and all this. Okay, so um, now it's about 10, uh, 20. Let's take a short break. Huh? We take about a 10 minutes break and then we're going to come back and uh, continue uh, and see what other uh, applications and uh, things that we can do with Microsoft Teams. Okay, so in the meantime, we take a short uh, 10 minutes break. Okay, just a stretching and then we'll come back at 10.32, all right? All right, thank you, Dr. Doni. So we break for 10 minutes. See you after this. Thank you. Okay, everyone, uh, I think we can resume back. Is is everyone back? Can we, can we resume?
Okay, sure, alright. Only one, ah? <laughs> what happened to the rest? Is everyone back? Not sure is everyone is back or not. Okay, sure, sure. Okay, excellent. Okay, yep, certainly. All right, wonderful. Okay, uh, let me just share with um, all of you the screen again. Uh, we're just going to get ourselves uh, familiar with some of the uh, Microsoft Teams interface uh, that we have here. So you can see that uh, at the top here, uh, you have show participants. So this uh, show participants here, you have uh, an information about everyone that is in the meeting. Uh, that means everyone is in the meeting now. So you can see that um, who is here and all this. So this is also a very useful feature uh, to help you mute the participants. Let's say if a participant is talking and you want to mute the participants, you can mute the participants. So in this case, uh, you can click the three dots here and you can uh, mute the participants. Or if you want to monitor certain participants, let's say you ask them to on their camera and you want to monitor certain participants to see whether they are always there and the camera is on you can even pin uh, you can even pin the participants that means the the, the picture uh, will be there and you are able to monitor the participants all the time right so you can even pin for that um here what is spotlight uh you can see like even for me now i'm being spotlight uh, so spotlight means that as you present uh the the focus is going to be on that person let's say that everybody else on their camera but the spotlight is only going to be on that one person. That means your picture or, or your video is going to be bigger uh, compared to everyone else. So this is one of the best main feature of uh, uh, Microsoft Teams. You will see that uh, at your right hand side, uh, you will see the uh, video of being spotlight there. Uh, so your, your video is a bit bigger compared to everyone else. So even though you share a PowerPoint, uh, you will see that your video is much bigger. So this is the best thing about um, spotlight. Yeah? Okay, and then uh, make an attendee, you can forget about that. Like, that's not so important, right? And then you can even remove uh, uh, participants from meeting. Uh, you want to remove them from meeting, they can even remove uh, from meeting. Uh. So uh, these are some of the features that you can do, okay, uh, under uh, participants, uh, under participants. And then here you have the chat window. We already explored this earlier, all right? Now, uh, the other things that you can do here is in, in the chat uh, window, one of the best things about this is this is if you are organizing the meeting, huh? if you are the organizer, if you are the participant is different, but if you are the organizer of the meeting, you can do a much more. One of the things that you can do in the chat, you can even share um, documents across. So you can see there's a paper clip file at the bottom here. So you can click this and you can upload uh, a document. Let's say that I want to go and upload a document from, uh, see for example, this document. Okay, I have a Microsoft Word document here. So now I want to share. So let's say I'm going to discuss with everyone and they say, okay, uh, maybe I'm talking about some journal articles. As soon as can I can I have a copy of the journal article or can you share with us that journal article? So I can easily attach the document and I just uh, click share and you'll see that my document is now shared in the chat. Now, if you open that document, you can easily open and you can easily read it. So this is how easy it is to just share. So you don't have to open your email or say, okay, I upload it in Spectrum or, you know, I, I will email you after this, you know, and all this. So all this is a very long work, a uh, very long, very tedious work. Uh, whereas in here, you already have your document uploaded here. It's quite easy. Are you all able to open the document? Can you open the document? Are you able to see what's inside? So you can just click on it and you are able to see. Uh, you see? So uh, Suha has already replied, yes. So easily uh, during the meeting, when you're having a meeting, you can easily exchange. Uh, you can easily share. So this is something that is very, very convenient. You can just attach. And you don't see this uh, across other uh, applications. Yeah, Zoom, you have the attachment. Lah, but others like Google Meet and all this, you, you, you don't have that uh, capability to attach documents. And sometimes Zoom also is not uh, uh, very efficient in terms of sometimes you attach documents, people cannot download. Uh, whereas this one is very consistent. You don't have that problem here. Okay, so you can easily share across. Um, now, another very feature, uh, useful feature is you even have the, uh, uh, what is this, the uh, icons that you have at the top here. So you have a few things that you have like, uh, you have love, then you have applause, you have laughing, you have surprise, you even have raised hand here. So if your students want to ask you any question, you can tell them, okay, you want to ask me any questions, you can raise your hand here. Uh, so you can put a raise hand icon and you can see that the box is now 
highlighted. Or if you want to have anything else, let's say your virtual applause, let's say people has already uh, finished presentation, uh, you cannot be unmuting and everyone clapping, uh, then it's going to be irritating to the ears because uh, it's an online platform. So what you can do is, uh, you can just have a virtual a virtual clap like this. Ah, can you all try that? Ah, I see like Pei Ming is uh, trying it now. Ah, Yi Pang is trying it now. Ah, Sharoja is trying it now. Okay, Sutrama. So you can have this. This is what we call virtual clap. Virtual clap. Okay, and then you can tell the students, do you understand uh, what I'm saying? Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to explain? If you understand, uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Ah, uh, so everyone is going to give you a like. Yeah, I understand it. Uh, I give you a like. So this is how you can easily share. Uh, easily uh, get some reaction from your students. So this is the, uh, 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 what is this? The feedback, the feedback icons that you have here. Now uh, here, under here, you also have uh, quite a number of uh, things that you can do here. Yeah? Um, you also have the uh, gallery. So this is the gallery. Gallery is a bit boring. Huh? Gallery is uh, where you is exactly the same as Google Meet. It's exactly the same as um, uh, uh, Cisco WebEx and Zoom and all this. Yeah? Where you have everything is just square. Square, 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 everything. So it's a very, very boring way of uh, teaching. You know. Uh, now you also have the option of large gallery. But large gallery, you see, is great here. Now, only if your students are uh, open more than nine videos. So you can see that here, nine videos and above, then you will have this option open. That means your students will have to switch on the camera. Uh, then they are able to, uh, you are able to activate the large gallery. Large gallery is everyone is going to fit into your screen. Okay, uh, this is more than nine videos. But this is a maximum of only 50, lah, 50 participants. Okay, uh, can fit at one time. Huh? So if it's more than that, then it's not possible. Huh? You cannot fit. Let's say 100 people, you cannot fit everyone uh, into that. Okay, so if you want to try the large gallery, uh, you can try that. Uh, maybe you need to switch on. Your, all of you have to switch on the camera and then we can try large gallery. And also I want to show you the next one is called uh, Together Mode. Together Mode. Uh, so Together Mode is also very interesting. Huh? Together Mode now is also a very, very interesting feature. So I will show you uh, about Together Mode. So uh you can turn on your camera now and i'll show you now we have how many one two three four five uh five cameras are on uh six so we have six now okay seven one two three four five six seven eight so i need one more to turn on the large gallery anyone else uh, turn on one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so anis has also turned on the the camera uh, now you see large gallery is already activated so you just click here and click back again now you see large gallery is now activated so now if you click large gallery so as more people uh, turn on their camera uh, you can see that you can more or less capture so this is very nice for photo taking where everyone is visible and then you can take a photo together you know so this is a very nice thing Anis you can help us to take a photo Anis take a take a screenshot uh, so maybe everyone smile, lah. <laughs> so that right. you can take a picture since we are in picture mode now. <laughs> All right, big smile. One, two, three. One more. One, two. All right. Okay. Okay. Another very useful feature uh, that uh, all of you can take note of is called together mode. So there is together mode. So to activate together mode, you need to get your camera still active. Uh. So what happens if I activate together mode? Um, so now together mode is uh, 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 you change your classroom, you know, you change your classroom to something that looks like this, uh, where it looks like you're sitting in the cafeteria, you know, uh, but this one, uh, you, there's only a few hours, huh, but actually there's more. Huh? So, <laughs> so you can even point to each other and say you're sitting each other in the cafe. Now you can even change the scene. So you see here at your bottom left here, you even have changed scene. Ah, so you can see that we have changed the scene to a classroom setting now. Uh, so now we all are sitting in a classroom. So you can even change the scene. Let's take a photo with this. All right. Uh, okay, second venue of photo session. <laughs> all right, ready. Three, two, one. One more, one, two. All right, thank you. Okay, so you even have this. Now this scene, uh, if, you, if, you, if you click this change scene, uh, you will be able to see there are many other scenes uh, that you can change. But take note of the numbers here. There's 50 here here and then there's five here and then there's uh, 47 here and then there's 24 here right okay for example if i turn on 24 
right? So 24 is going to look something like this. You are like in a, some kind of a spaceship. So let's say if you have a class of uh, 20 students, 30 students, 50 students, or more than 50 students, uh, all 50 students cannot fit. Uh, there's only, uh, uh, so you have to be mindful about uh, choosing the, 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 the scene, uh, the scene, because each scene only has five. For example, this scene, uh, this scene only has five. So even though your class has uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 40 over students, you can see that only five people can fit inside here. So you need to be seeing, the, you need to monitor. Uh, this one, for example, only have seven. Ah, so it looks like you're sitting in some kind of a uh, conference, conference things. And then um, here you even have an underwater scene. Ah, uh, underwater. So all of us are underwater. This one lagi cantik lah, Anis. Tapi this one, uh, but not everyone can go inside here. So tak apalah, kita be a more representative. Ah, uh, you see this one? Okay, you, you, can show to, yeah. to our can, kids. All right, okay, ready? Three, two, one, one more. Three, two. All right. Okay, so those who, who wants to be part of this, but they are not part of this, huh? because uh, why you only have seven, right, uh, in uh, here in this scene. So if you have a class of 40 something, but if you, uh, this one, you only have 10. You only have 10, right? One of the tips is you can exit the meeting and come back. And high chances is your your, your picture will be here. Okay, so then that, that is just to let you know lah, some of the tips. Huh? They say, hey, ah, come, ah, class 30 orang, saya pun nak, ah, I saw one, but my picture is not there. So one of the tips is you can exit and come back. Uh, one of the best thing that I do is I actually use this feature in my class. So this is uh, one of the application. So this I actually use in my class, you know, so uh, it looks like I'm actually teaching in a lecture hall. So instead of forcing your student to turn on the camera, you can tell them in the beginning. Okay, um, so uh, can all of you turn on your camera and then you on this mode so everyone is going to be there. So, okay, I want to see you throughout the class, you know, so uh, you need to turn on your camera throughout the class so that I can see you and then uh, we can have a teaching. So instead of you always forcing your student, I'll make sure you turn on your camera, turn on your camera, you know, turn on your camera so the student also, yeah, on, off, on, off and maybe that. Now you can see your student, you put a classroom setting like this, they have no choice because if they turn on, they disappear, right? So you can say, oh, how come uh, I cannot see? Hey, what happened to Azizi? Azizi, what happened? Why you went missing? I can't see you now. Ah, then Azizi, alama, the, the lecture is uh, calling me. So this is a, a more friendlier or more gentle way to encourage your student to continue turning on the camera. Uh, rather than keep on uh, forcing them to turn on. Uh. So you on this classroom thing, for them to appear, the camera must on. So it looks like you are lecturing them, uh, you are, but actually they are, the motive is to actually see them. Uh. Uh, so this is another tips that I'm giving you to encourage your students, okay? So this is what we call uh, together mode now, all right? So I'm going to return back to gallery, okay? And you can uh, switch off your camera if you want to, okay? The next one that you want to take note of is called um, apply background effect. Apply background effect. Now, what is apply background effect? Background effect, uh, now you can see there are many nice background effect under Microsoft Teams. So some of you, are, uh, your background is actually a background of office or background of your house or something, you know. Uh, so uh, Teams doesn't have my background. Huh? My, my background is a bit unique, uh, but here under uh, apply background effects, okay, you can choose uh, many backgrounds here. So it looks a bit professional for you. Lah. I think, uh, Siuha, uh, you are already using the background, so uh, you don't have that problem. But many of you, uh, the, the background that you're using is probably your office background and all this. So can you all try? Can you all try to just on and see uh, what kind of background that uh, you can have? You can choose from this. Okay, like for example, uh, Sutami, uh, you are having a background of maybe your office there. So maybe you can search for this virtual background. I uh, search for this virtual background and uh, switch. So uh, Nini, you are also having a background of office. Uh, uh, Gani, you also having a, uh, you see, now it looks more professional. Uh, sekarang Gani looks very pro. Uh, so uh, there's a nice background there. Uh, so Nini also, wow, very nice. Uh, Sutarmi also, very nice. There's a nice purple color. So Yifang also, you can see that is a nice background. So I always encourage you to use um, your own background. Uh, use, uh, use a professional uh, background like this because you don't want people to be seeing the items at the back of you. You, you don't want to see what's behind me. Uh, it's behind me is very messy. Okay, <laughs> So uh, when you have a virtual background like this, it helps you in terms of uh, your professional image. Uh, and 
you can also upload your own uh, picture. You can also upload your own picture. So you click add new here. Um, you can also upload your own background picture. If you have a background picture, uh, you can already upload, right? So you can even go to the internet. Um, let me share the screen with you. Huh? Let me share the screen. I have two screens here. Okay, so you can even go to the internet, okay, and, and go to Google, for example. Uh, maybe you can put cool, uh, cool Microsoft uh, Teams. Cool Microsoft Teams background. Okay, so now you can even go here and go to images here. Cool Microsoft Teams background. You can go images and you can pick other other image, other image, and you're like, ah, you see this one. This one looks like some uh, king, king, king palace punya uh, background here. So you can even choose, and then you can choose any of this background. You can save it as an image. Uh, so you I have matrix. Uh, you got the, all this green thing, you got matrix. So you can download. This is how I have my own uh, background. So I, I, I can uh, download uh, accordingly. Now, UM also have an official background. So if you want to go to UM uh, official background, you have to log into your UM portal first, all right? And then uh, you can download the official UM background. Huh? So you can go to, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, is PTJ Info, if I'm not mistaken. It's under PC, uh, PTJ Info. And then you go to Pejabat uh, Komunikasi Koprat, CCO. Okay, then you have line, line here. Yeah. Okay, then you even have all the logos. Huh? You have, hey, no, 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 not, not under line, line. I think it's under brand toolkit. Huh? Ah, they're under brand toolkit. So you go under UM, go to uh, PTJ Info, and then go to Pejabat Komunikasi Koprat, and then go to brand toolkit. Okay, and then you have many other things in, in uh, UM portal. So you want to see virtual meeting background. So if you click virtual meeting background, you can use this virtual background that UM already has given. So this is some uh, picture of the chancellery and this is a picture of DTC and you even have a background of the UM logo. So you can even click, uh, you can even click this and uh, you are able to download, you see? So you're able to download this into your uh, computer. So you can click and save. Lah. And then you can use Teams, you can upload this into Teams and use it as your background. Okay, so this is about changing uh, background. Huh? Now, um, you also have an ability to download attendance, right? So if you want to download your participants' attendance, you go to show participants here, all right? Uh, but here, I am not the meeting organizer. Yeah, only the meeting organizer is able to download the attendance. Huh? If you're not the organizer, you're the participant, um, as in you, organizer, as in you are the one who create the meeting, uh, the link. If you are not the one who create, you don't, cannot download. Um, uh, only your, uh, the person who create the meeting can download. So in this case, I am not the one who created the meeting. So I don't have this option here. Uh, but as an organizer, you will have an option. There will be a three dots here where you can click and you can download the attendance into an Excel file. Uh, so you can keep it for your course file documentation and list. And the Excel file is so uh, detailed, you can even see what time your student log in, what time your student log out, and how, how many hours and minutes they have been in a meeting. So it's very, very accurate and it's very, very useful. Huh? So you can go and check that out. Huh? Uh, this is on terms of uh, downloading attendance. So go to participants list here, okay, and then you will have this option. Now you cannot see because we are not the meeting organizer, right? Only the meeting organizer can see the uh, download attendance okay uh, now the next one is uh, i'm going to show you this really cool feature under teams uh, this one we can do it together so now if you see that i'm under general okay i'm under general now right now i'm going to go to files okay and here under files you even have class materials lah. but if you, you don't want to use this folder it's okay lah. sometimes it's just there for that Right, but now let's say if I go to files, right, uh, I want to upload a, 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 a file here. So I'm going to click upload. I'm going to go files. Okay, now you have an option. You want to upload an entire folder also can. So maybe in your folder got few files. You want to upload the entire folder can, or you want to upload only a specific files you can. Right, so you have two options. So I'm going to click files. 
right? And I am going to search maybe for a very specific file, for example, this file. Okay, and I'm going to upload it into here and you can see that Teams has already uploaded my document. So my document is called Describe What You Can See. Okay, so can all of you open this document? Uh, click this document and open it. And now you will see that it's opening under Microsoft Teams. All right, so you have the title here. Describe what you can see and you have the uh, picture here, right? So now what you can do is uh, you can also type. You can also type here. Okay, so can you all start typing in this document? Can you let me know? Can you describe what you can see? Can you type inside here? Go to the, the page. Yeah, so how do you know whether your students are entering? Yeah? So you can see here on top here. You see their name is coming up. Noel is already joining. Uh, Ghani is already joining. See, so you can even monitor your student's name like this. Now you have three students joining here. Uh, that means they are already joining and editing the document. So you see, now there is Ghani, Noel, and there's Norgini. Okay. So can you edit? Maybe just type down here. Type down here. Maybe put your name and tell me in one sentence or two, what do you see in this picture? Describe what you can see. So maybe put your name and describe what you can see. Okay, so L A S L S H is typing something. Okay, Nordini is also typing something. Okay, Gani is also typing something. So you can help your students in terms of organizing. Bring it down so it doesn't overlap. Gani can also bring it down so it doesn't overlap. Okay, so you can see Gani is typing. Dini is typing, um, Alice H is also typing. Okay, so Ghani says preparing for a lecture. Nordini says checking for the information. Alice H says this person is checking on the book for some information. Okay, Yi Fang says messy table. Okay, and Norel says busy going through materials ah uh, so you see how interesting it is so you just upload one file and multiple students can come into this document and edit it together so you can do a very nice collaboration so you can encourage your student participation you can encourage engagement like this so the students will see wow i can actually contribute uh, so there is one document that all of us can share now this document is also very useful let's say you're writing a journal article a uh, journal article and you're collaborating among researchers you can use teams so just uh, upload your draft here in uh, microsoft teams for example you close this draft so you just upload your your draft here and all your uh, co-authors they can continuously click on this and they can continuously edit and all you got to do is just click this and all of you can view the same document you can edit the same document you can view the same document and see okay who has done what and what is the extent of the article uh, is it already there or not and all this uh. so this is something that is also very very useful for us are uh, very useful for collaboration now if you want to make it a little bit more organized okay this is uh, probably a little bit messy if you want to make it a bit more organized you can make it more organized this is what i do in my classroom i go to insert okay and i put table so i put table and then i put uh depends on how many students i have in my class so let's say i'm gonna put uh, maybe name okay and then answer okay name and answer so now i'm just gonna delete all of this okay all these answers here that you all have time i'm gonna delete all of this okay now can you answer back again in this so pick a column uh put your name and put your answer so describe what you can see ah uh, so you see Yi Fang is now typing messy table okay how the rest pick a column and type your answer any of this column that you want so if you run out of column you can put your mouse here at the end and then you just press the tap the tap uh, button in your keyboard you just press tap uh, you can create more you see so more tabs can create so you can see Suha is also writing 
uh, Nordini is also writing, uh, Ghani is also writing, right? So you can see messy table, reading books, searching information, okay, preparing a lecture. So this is something that is very, very nice and easy. And then here on your top uh, right here, you can even initiate conversation. So if you click conversation here, um, you can even start, you can even start in chat. That means while you're writing this document, you can even chat. You said, um, hi everyone, or maybe hi, uh, Siwa. Siwa, I like your answer lah. Ah, so you can even put like that. Okay, hi Siwa, I like your answer lah. So the rest of you can even reply. Ah, you can even reply and you can even put in the chat, you see? So this is something that is very, very interesting and very nice. This is in document collaboration. So you can collaborate. And if you see that the earlier version is a little bit disorganized, okay? But uh, uh, this time when you put a table, it's much more organized. Uh, you see like uh, Nordini says, yeah, me too, you see? So you can check. So this is how your students can check. And then here you can even have all the normal reaction you have in Teams where if you hover over, the student can put thumbs like and, and all this, you know, and you can even share attachment. You see here, you can even share document. Let's say you're collaborating here and say, okay, I think uh, we need another document. You know, the, the, remember the slides we are talking about. Remember there's another Word document. So immediately you can attach and say, okay, class, I'm going to attach this document. Can you immediately read and read that document and uh, put your answer into this? Ah, So now it becomes even more. Uh, powerful and then you can even comment see you can even comment so maybe i can go here and put the suha i'm going to highlight here the suha's uh, comment and I, I i'm going to put a comment here so i'm going to put a comment okay and then i'm going to put new comment here okay now i'm going to say good answer good answer and then i'm going to put click see so now there's a comment so now suha will be thinking oh what is this ah huh? oh my lecturer say good answer okay now Busy. So Sutami says busy. Then you can even put a comment here. Uh, so maybe put interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, we can discuss this later. Ah, see? So now maybe you can tell to uh, uh, Sutami. So it's uh, interesting. Maybe we can discuss later. See? So this is something that you can use. Uh, so is you can comment. Uh, you can highlight, okay, and all of them can come and edit this document together. So it's something that is very, very useful. Huh? Uh, Chantrika, you have a question? Huh? Is it? Do you have a question? Hey? Uh, yes, yes, I have ah. a question because I cannot view the Word file that you are doing now. Okay. Um, are you in the Teams? Are you in the... Are you a member of my group yet, this one? Uh, my Remember, I gave the code earlier. Are you a member yet? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, no, I didn't add. I should. Ah, yeah, only when you add. See, so if you check, okay, like for example, Chantrika is a student now. So Chantrika, uh, how come I cannot view? I cannot view the document. So you just go to uh, the group, click manage uh, team, and then you can see the members. Ah, okay, so you can say, Chantrika, did you add the code earlier? If you don't add the code, you are not able to do the activity. So now I need to give the code to Chantrika. So go to team code, go to settings, go to team code, and give this code. So Chantrika, can you add this code? Ozu 9 nas I'm going to put in the chat. Okay. Uh, then you can join. So you can join the, uh, you can join the team code. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so just go and click here, join. Then you are able to join, okay? Where is the document? Nini, uh, you can find the document. Huh? Why give us a password? You see, uh, Nini and uh, Quack, are you a member? If you have joined this, then you are able to edit. So you have not joined the group. You see, you can just uh, drop down. You see your name here. Nini, your name is not here. That means you have not joined the group. Only uh, Now only you have joined. So Nini has just joined. Okay, and then you have... Uh, Quack. So quack, you don't have here because you have not joined the group. You have to join. Remember I gave a code earlier. So once you use that code, then you are able to edit the document. Otherwise, you're not able to edit. Okay. So this is how we uh, collaborate and we edit documents online. Right. So this is something that is very uh, interesting and useful. Huh? Your, your, uh, your students will really enjoy. 
uh, doing this. So you want to collaborate, uh, you just click the file again and you are able to collaborate. Can you all give me feedback? What do you all think about this? What do you all think about this exercise that we, we just did here? About this collaboration and all this. This activity. What do you all think? Eh? Okay, interesting. Any other feedback? I think you all can unmute also. It's not a problem. Huh? You can even unmute and and give your feedback also. What what do you all think? Okay. Okay, so there's a thumbs up by Sutarmi there. Rainbow style. So PM is rainbow style. <laughs> so you have rainbow style at the side there. Okay. So your, your friends can also reply on the comments. You, you see the students can even reply on their comments one by one. Huh? So this is something that is uh, quite interesting. Okay, now the next one is about screen sharing. Huh? Okay, so if you want to screen share, okay, you want to screen share, uh, you will see there are a few options here. This is your camera button. This is the microphone for you to mute and unmute. Now this is the screen sharing button, right? So when you screen share this button, right, when you click this, it's going to be like a triangle. It's going to be a triangle. And then you have a few options here. Okay, let me just uh, screenshot this. So you, when, when you click that triangle uh, button, you will have like screen and you will also have uh, windows. Okay, so there are a few options. So this is something that is very nice about Teams because uh, you have many, many options to actually share screen so you can see for example uh, are you able to see this uh, this uh, stepping tool are you able to see this uh, share content this one can you all see this yes so you see that this is something that is quite useful why because in microsoft you have presenter mode right so this one when you on your camera and on your slide, you can experiment on this. So there are many, many uh, types of uh, presenter mode here. Now there are also different types. You can share a window, you can even share a screen. But I will always recommend to choose the first option, share a screen. That will be much better. Don't uh, share a window. Sometimes when you switch to another different document or go to a different website, your student will tell you, oh, we cannot see, we cannot see, you know. So it's best to always choose the first option, which is share screen. Right now, another very useful option you have is called PowerPoint Live. PowerPoint Live, right? So now you can even click the last option called Browse My Computer, and you can upload your PowerPoint into Microsoft Teams. And here it enables you to see in presenter view. That means you can see all your slides there, and also you are able to see the audience. Uh, so let's say if you are giving a presentation, you want to see your students, and you want to see your slides two in one. Now, this will be the PowerPoint Live option. Uh, this is something is interesting. Now, if you share screen, you can only see your PowerPoint unless you have two, two desktop. You only have two screens, then it's a different thing. Otherwise, you share screen, you're only going to see your PowerPoint. You can't see your students, right? So, uh, there is two ways to do this. One, if you want to see your PowerPoint and present, so you can go to PowerPoint Live and upload your uh, PowerPoint there. Or you can choose presenter mode, presenter mode. So I'm going to show you how is uh, presenter mode done. Huh? Okay, so uh, let me just stop sharing and I am going to uh, share my slides now and I'm going to show you about presenter mode. So there is so many interesting ways la, which you, you can uh, uh, do this. So now this is a uh, presenter. Uh, now you can see I'm sharing my slide. Okay, but if you don't have two screens, you only can focus on your PowerPoint. Uh, you're not able to see your student. But now if I go to uh, presenter mode, if I share my slide and I go to presenter mode, let's say that I'm going to put maybe this uh, this mode, okay? And then I'm going to share this mode, okay? Now you can see that um, you are actually appearing um, on the slide. Are you all able to see me on the, on the slide? That means my, my picture is on the slide. You are able to see me on the uh, slide itself. Are you all able to see that? 
Ah, so you see, <laughs> this is really, really cool, you know, and really, really professional, you see? So nice. So you see your slide, and then you see also your picture there, side by side. Very, very nice, you know, very professional, you know. At one time, I go to a conference, huh, and I present like this, huh, that they all were like so captivated. They said, hey, what software you are using? Huh? Why it looks so different? Huh? I said, ah, so I'm using Microsoft Teams, see? So you can see me, and you can also see the slides, you see? So very nice. Ah, so they, they were so captivated. You can put both uh, side by side. So they thought it's, it's some some kind of very expensive software what I'm using, but actually not lah. I'm only using Microsoft Teams, you see. So you even have other uh, kind of options. So you even have uh, this kind of option as well. Uh, reporter. Okay. Ah, now you have this kind of uh, option. Ah, now you see. So you have me on a much bigger... <laughs> A much a much bigger uh, a much bigger picture and then your slide is smaller so there are a few options uh, for you to choose huh? so you can choose and uh, see which one that suits you the best uh, which one that you like the best okay so that is on uh, PowerPoint uh, that is on uh, PowerPoint uh, reporter uh, the presenter mode the presenter mode okay now you even have the standout uh, so if you want to stand out it's going to look something like this lah. so this is the standout mode Ah, now you can see that I'm here, All right? So now you go to the next slide, you switch to the next slide, uh, you're going to see I'm here. So now your student can also see, la. so sometimes your student miss you, la. your student miss you a lot. They say, Ayo, ah, when you share the screen ready, uh, I cannot see my lecturer, I only can see the PowerPoint, my lecturer becomes so small already. Uh, so this is one of the uh, ways that you can, uh, uh, what is this, present at the same time, okay? Is everyone okay? Is everyone clear on this? You want to try? Do you all want to try to, to present? Um, try PowerPoint Live. Okay, so there are two options. The one that I demonstrated to you is uh, presenter mode. Now you can try PowerPoint Live. PowerPoint Live as in you upload your PowerPoint into Teams. Anyone wants to try that? Nobody wants to try. Anyone wants to try about that option? On uh, PowerPoint Live. You can try it now. It's not a problem. Any PowerPoint that you have, la, it can be your class PowerPoint or what. Any PowerPoint you, you, you have, you can try to experiment and see how it works. So that you get familiar with, uh, with the presentation. Huh? Anyone wants to try or I, I move on? Anyone who's a try, please put in the chat so at least we know we can wait for you. No one, huh? Going once? Going twice? I'm trying now. Okay. Ah, there you go. So Sutarmi is now uh, uh, trying. Nice. So you have two slides here. Now you see what happens is... Uh, uh, I'm able to navigate, you know, I'm able to go to your slide. You see, I, I know what's in slide two. Slide two is enriched student learning experience, you see. So you haven't gone to slide two, right? But I can go to slide two. Okay, and the reason is, you see at the top, there is an eye. You see the eye there? Um, mm. Can you click that eye? Mm -hmm. uh, now you click that eye, I cannot go. I cannot go to slide two. So I can follow your rhythm. So if you don't click that eye, so uh, usually when you present, people can just scroll through your slides. Say, okay, what other slides you have? Huh? So if you click that eye, I cannot see. I only can follow your pace. Now in that same uh, PowerPoint, you can even use laser pointer. Can you try the laser pointer? You have the laser pointer there, right? And you can uh -huh. even have uh, highlighter and all this. Uh-huh, eraser and, uh, okay, laser, ah, laser pointer. Laser pointer, can you try? The la yes. Ah, there you see. So you even have laser pointer there. You can have laser pointer uh, and we can see your presentation. You have a laser pointer and you even have highlighter and all this, right? So uh, there you go. So this is how you can capture your student's attention. Uh, so that means this won't disturb your PowerPoint. It's just a presentation, mm -hmm. right? But uh, you get an idea on how to, um, uh, what it goes, navigate. Uh. And then uh, on, on our side, uh, on our side, okay, let me, let me just uh, see this part. Uh. I'll stop presenting. 
Oh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't stop presenting. Hold on. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay, already stop presenting. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. okay, can you try back again? Try back again. All right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let me just uh, try something here. Hold on. Uh. Ah, all right. Let me let me just take a, a screenshot of this. Okay, what happens is now, okay, now, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, wait, not yet. Uh. Okay, uh, can you stop sharing, uh, Sutami? All right. Okay, now let me share my screen on Sutami's presentation. Huh? Okay, so Sutami, is this what you presented earlier? Your presentation slide just now, is this what you presented? Uh -huh, but but it's not uh, um, the, the Chinese character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happens is uh, this is something you can teach your students. What has done is I have translated your slide into Chinese, right? So you can see that earlier you presented in English, but the students and your viewers have the option to translate your slide. So if you, how do you do that? If you see in your PowerPoint, okay, you have this uh, option called uh, this one, more actions. See more actions. So when you click this more actions, you can select the language that you want. Right. So this is very useful, especially if you are teaching students in uh, from other countries in your class. Uh, for example, in my class, I have quite a number of students from China. Right. And uh, they sometimes have difficulty to understand English and read English. So they are able to translate. So you can tell your students, OK, uh, when I share with you the screen, uh, you are able to click the three dots here and you can translate into your own language so that they can able to relate to whatever that you're presenting. All right, is this okay? So there are few languages huh, you can translate. Huh? So this is uh, translation into Chinese. Okay. All right. Any any questions you all have so far? Are you all okay for for this? If they don't uh, enable the translate, then they are going to see your slide as it is in English. Huh? That is just an option. Uh, it's, not, it's nothing wrong there. It's just an option. Okay, so now the next one that we're going to learn is how to schedule a meeting within Teams. Huh? Uh, to arrange a meeting within Teams is quite easy. You go, go to General. Now, if you go to General, you will see at your top right here, there is a Meet button. Meet button. So this is what I mean earlier when I say that you don't have to create link, create link again and again and again and again. So when you already have your entire class um, in the group, uh, you already added them in the group, you just can click this meet button, all right? And you're going to appear uh, launching like this. So you can immediately meet. So you don't have to create, uh, go to calendar, create the link and all this. So this is something that is very easy, a shortcut for all of you, right? So you can immediately join now and you are able to join the meeting. See shortcut, just one click button, uh, meet, and then you are able to immediately join the meeting. So fast and so simple. So for the rest of the students uh, who are uh, joining, right, they can just straight away click the button as well. Okay, for example, you see this one, we are having a meeting now. So once the meeting, let's say somebody has already initiated a meeting, you are going to get a box that looks something like this. So uh, you have joined. So you can see that all of us are here. Click join. So when you click join, you are in the meeting. So now to start the meeting, just go to general and click meet. So anyone who does this, once they already click, you will get a box that looks something like this. Lah. So now the rest of them, just click join and you are able to initiate your meeting. Okay, is it clear so far? Can follow everyone? Are you okay? Uh, can you put in the chat if you're okay? Not sure whether what happened. Is is everyone okay? Okay. Yep. Clear. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, so the last part of our team's uh, training this morning, 
will be on how to aim your core, how to aim your core, right? Uh, so in Teams, uh, it's slightly unique uh, how to aim your core. Uh, you don't have to click this now. Uh, this is just for your knowledge. Uh. So you see there is this leaf button, right? This leaf button here, right? Now beside this leaf button, okay, this is for you to leave. This is for you to leave, right? This if you are participating in a meeting, you have the leave button. But if you are the meeting organizer, you have an option to end the meeting. Because what happens is if you are just clicking the leave button here, you are leaving the meeting, but the rest of the student are still online. So when you are the meeting organizer, you will have a drop down button here. Beside leave, you have another drop down you have an option to end the meeting. So when you end the meeting means everyone leaves the meeting, the meeting ends. So that is what it means by end the meeting. All right, so I will always encourage you, if you are the meeting organizer, to end the meeting, don't leave. Because when you leave, the meeting is still running, the meeting is still on, and your students are still online. Okay, uh, so end the meeting so that everyone leaves. Okay, so this is um, what Microsoft Teams is all about. So do you all have any questions about Microsoft Teams? I, I'm done with Microsoft Teams. Do you all have any questions about Microsoft Teams? Now we have an open Q&A uh, before we learn something new. Huh? So I'm already done with uh, Microsoft Teams. Any questions on Teams? No questions? Okay, so Yi Fang says, just now about the meet, what if you want to schedule a meeting up front? Can. If you want to schedule a meeting up front, you can also do that. Uh, let's go to Teams. Okay. So here, if you want to schedule a meeting upfront, this is just within your group. Huh? This is just within your group. You want to schedule a meeting upfront just within your group. That means just within your group means members in the group. All right. So you go to here, click this, schedule a meeting. See, there's a drop down here. Schedule a meeting. So now you can put the meeting title. Required attendees, no need lah, because they are ready in the uh, group ready. And then you put the date, the, the time and all this. Okay. And then you see this is the group is already there. So only the group members will be able to see Microsoft 365 general. And then you put the details of the meeting. And then you click send and they will get a notification. Let me put example. Uh, meeting uh, follow up. Follow up on Teams workshop. Okay. So I'm going to put maybe... Uh, uh, later today, say maybe at 4 p.m. Okay, 4 to 4 30. Okay, uh, please take note of the above session. Okay, for example, yeah, all right, and I'm going to click send. Dr. Roni, have you share your screen? Hi, oh, 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> okay, okay, just a moment, huh? Ah, okay. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me repeat again. Huh? Okay, let me, let me just go back. Uh, okay, uh, some... Uh, Yi Fang, uh, Yi Fang asks, uh, how to schedule a meeting within Teams? Uh, uh, schedule a meeting up front. So, click this drop down. Click this drop down here, and then click schedule a meeting. Okay, now you can add a title here. So, let me put um, follow up. on teams okay so you can this one no need lah no need to pay because it's already in the group then, then this one you can change the date so maybe i'm gonna put a uh, change the time 5 30 to 6 pm maybe and uh, now you see you this is a meeting within the group uh, uh by microsoft then general so i'm gonna put this uh please note the above activity okay then you can click send right so now you can see that here the the meeting is already here please note the above activity the follow-up is already here it's it's in the uh, teams chat itself right 
So now if your participants, your students, they can say, okay, view meeting details. Uh, what is this meeting details? Oh, 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 there's a meeting here. Okay, and then they can click join. So they click join. What happens if they click join? You will get the meeting launching window. Okay, this is how simple it is huh? to organize the meeting upfront within the group. Uh, teams on browser and apps have different settings, uh, right? Yes, uh, no. Uh, teams on browser and apps, apps have uh, limited functions, whereas the browser have more functions. Okay. Okay, uh, if we created a Teams, can we still generate the code to share with others instead of sending link? Uh, what do you mean by that, uh, Payameng? Uh? Can you give an example? Uh? What do you mean by that? Uh? Still generate the code to share with others instead of sending link. Can we still generate the code? Oh, you mean you, you want to organize a meeting uh, and uh, instead of uh, sending link, you send the code. Is that what you mean? Oh, no, 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 you can't. Uh, so organize a meeting, you you have to do it this way. Uh, the code is just to add the members into the teams, right? <clears throat> but you all please take note uh, that <clears throat> this way of organizing meeting is the members must be in your group. Uh, that means like join or create a team, then you give the code and these people, only the people within this group. So how to check, uh, you go to this one, my uh, uh, 365, you go to manage team, all the members in this group. So you see, this is the owners and this is the members. That means if you organize a meeting like this, only these members can join. Other people cannot join. Only these members can join. So if you want to have a meeting where your class and anybody else outside of the group can join, then you have to do another way. This way is only within your group. Okay, so that means anyone that is not in this group here, outside people cannot join. Uh, they will have an error, they cannot join. So if you want to have a meeting where inside the group members can join, outside also can join, then you have to schedule it from the calendar. So you go to the calendar here and you schedule it. So you go to calendar, you have new meeting. New meeting and then you schedule it here. Then you put in the attendees. All right, but I can me give you a shortcut. Lah. This one is actually very difficult. Lah. Okay, like so for example, meeting, uh, meeting with um, edX on Teams. Okay, for example, meeting with edX on Teams. Lah. Oh, oh, spelling error. Okay, so now what you have to do is you have to actually put the name one by one, you know, very, very leche, you know, if you want to schedule outside of Teams. You see, inside Teams, you already create a group. So you don't need to put your members name because all their names is already inside there. Uh, the members is already in the group. Whereas, outside uh, if you schedule it through the calendar you have to add otherwise they won't be getting the link in the group they are already inside so they can see or oh, the link is there right uh, whereas here they cannot see so what you need to do the fastest way instead of adding all their names one by one you send it to your email so for example i'm going to put donny.adams at gmail.com okay donny.adams at gmail.com so i'm going to schedule the meeting Let's say maybe 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Okay, this is empty. Huh? So you notice, huh? now you all notice that this is empty. Nothing here, right? Nothing here is empty, right? So I click send. So what is going to happen is, it's going to send to my Gmail. So now you have to scroll down. The meeting is at 7 o'clock. This is 11 o'clock, right? So you have to scroll down. Ah, so you have the meeting here. So you see at 7 p.m. Meeting with EdEx on Teams. Double click. Now you will notice is, what happens here? You see, there's something new happen here. Click here to join the meeting. So here is the link. So left click, eh, sorry, right click, right click, copy link, right click, copy link, and then you can put the email and send it to them. So if there's less than 10 people or what, you can afford to put their emails here. If it's such a large group, uh, 50, 60, or, or what, then better to do it this way. i uh, just copy the link, and then go to your Gmail and you can put uh, uh, all the emails there and send the link. This is a shortcut. Lah. Uh, so anyone outside of the group can also join. Okay. Any other questions on uh, Teams?
Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ah, Azizi. Ah, yeah, Azizi. Go ahead. Do we have to always uh, approve the membership or the usually when when the first first two weeks, for example, uh, we 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 gave the link, we provided the link to the students. And students just click the link to join the group. But we, in, in my experience, I have I still have to approve all the uh, the, the the students in order to join the group. Do we have any other means automatically? Uh, because it's uh, some, sometimes during the class we have to go back and forth between between uh, this meeting and Microsoft Teams just to look at the what icon over there, uh, the notification and approve all, approve all. Do, do you have any any idea how to automate that process? Thanks. Okay, when you talk about approval, Azizi, are you talking about meeting them means they come into the waiting room and you you approve them? Are you talking about that? No, that no, the, the, the group, the group itself, not, not the meeting. The the teams okay team. so example, now i create a team for my class class abc and okay. uh, i have uh, one uh, telegram or whatsapp group for that class i click the uh, copy link to team not to meeting to teams and then i paste that in the, uh, the the whatsapp or telegram group and also i provide the, the code but usually, I, I'm not sure. Uh, usually, my, my experience is that I have to approve each and every student. Uh, I, I just click yes, approve everyone. But that process is uh, yes, especially for for life, life class. Okay, I understand. So in that's the case, uh, I think that what has happened is you are giving them a link. That shouldn't be a way. You should give them the code. That means ask them to log through Microsoft 365, okay, and go to Teams, and then from there, join. Join or create a team. So you just give them the code for them. Then you don't have to approve. They already have the code, and then they use the code to join, and it's only one time. Uh, what they join is already permanent. So for example, yeah. here, if you see the manage team here, all my members here are permanent. So even next week, uh, next year, you know what they are going to be here. You don't have to approve anymore. Also, so, so the difference between using code and using link. Yes. In my understanding, from what you have said, using code, you do not have the uh, approval the process of approval. Yeah. Correct. But link, yes, you will yes. do. Uh, all, although the, the students are using e UM's email. Yeah, you're right. Because why? link is temporary uh, whereas the code is permanent so if you go okay. to settings here uh, you see i generate a team code is permanent the code is forever permanent it's, it's never changing so that is why when you give the code it's more better than the link because the link is each time they join they have you have to approve 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 again whereas the code one time they uh, join is already there permanent you don't have to approve anymore it's a permanent thing it's just the first time uh, join is enough Okay, thank you. Huh? Okay, you try that method and see. Yeah? Okay, any other questions on uh, Teams? Anyone knows what is the Teams uh, meeting limit? That means how many members can join per meeting? 300, is it? Uh, now it's 1,000. Wow. <laughs> Now it's 1,000. So 1,000 can join per meeting. Can you imagine this kind of meeting that we're having now? 1,000 people can join. You can have a conference from there. <laughs> okay? So that's how powerful uh, Teams is. Uh. 1,000 people can join per meeting. Okay? And it's very stable. It won't crash. I had a conference where 900 over... Uh, I helped to organize the conference where I created all the links and all, all this uh, for the whole the whole ecosystem of the conference. Uh, I created uh, under faculty of medicine, nursing department recently we had. Uh, so we had a, a large number of people there and, you know, it was very stable. Okay. Right. Uh, so you can have one, up to 1,000. Yeah. 
Okay, so if there's no more questions, uh, I think we take a short break, about 10 minutes, and then we will come back at 10.45. We will look at Microsoft OneNote, uh, Microsoft OneNote. Okay, so we take a short break, yeah? All right, thank you, Dr. Doni. Okay, everyone, uh, can we continue? Um, is everyone back? Okay, Anis, <laughs> Anis is here. How about the rest, huh? Everyone is still here. Everyone is okay? Okay, I'm here. Okay, yes. Yes, back. Okay, now the next part, uh, we are going to learn about Microsoft OneNote, yeah? Microsoft OneNote. Okay, now... Uh, Microsoft OneNote is another application that is very, very nice to use. Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, let's go to Microsoft OneNote. Okay, to access Microsoft OneNote, it's very simple and it's very straightforward. Okay, uh, so first you have to go to the uh, general. Go to the general tab here. Okay, and you have class notebook class notebook so select the class notebook here okay and it will prompt you to set up one note class notebook okay so you have an option whether you want to set up from a blank that means you want to start totally new or you want to start from an existing notebook content so the existing notebook content means you already have used OneNote before uh, and then uh, you want to use more or less the same template. That means you set up, you have a specific template that you want to use, you can use from a, a past template. Otherwise, you can start from a blank notebook. So I'm going to start from a blank notebook. And here are some important information that you want to take note of. Huh? Collaboration space, content library, teacher only section and student notebook. So let me share my slide to give you some explanation about OneNote, right? Okay, so this is uh, class OneNote. Oh yeah, before that, uh, so these are some of the YouTube links uh, that I've already put in here. Yeah? So in case you want to have a recap about a step-to-step -step guide and always how to use uh, uh, Teams, you can also access uh, through these YouTube links. Uh? This is a uh, step one to step six, okay? So now we're going to learn about Microsoft OneNote I, Microsoft OneNote is known as a digital notebook. Uh, it's a digital notebook. So it looks something like this, a digital notebook. So let's watch a short video about uh, Microsoft OneNote uh, uh, before we go into hands-on. What is Microsoft OneNote? Okay, let's see this video. OneNote is a digital notebook application that enables you to save and organize information, handwritten and typed notes, online research, receipts you want to keep a record of, documents you want to read and annotate, items you want to track, and much more. Your information is neatly structured into notebooks with the sections and pages. Everything in OneNote, whether it's handwritten, or text on an image is searchable so that you can easily find what you need. By saving your OneNote notebooks to the cloud, your information is securely backed up and synchronized across all your devices. Notebooks saved to the cloud can also be shared with other people, co-workers, or people outside your organization. By being able to access your notes from anywhere on any device, you can make sure to capture those great ideas you get on the fly. You can find notes without having to worry about when or where you took them. And you can declutter your life by digitizing paper-based information. With OneNote, you can be your very best in the workplace and at home.
Okay, so that's a very short video of uh, Microsoft OneNote. Uh, what is Microsoft OneNote all about? So these are some very important information uh, that you need to take note. There are four sections in the notebook. You have collaboration space. Okay, and if you talk about collaboration space, uh, both the, you and the student can edit the content. Okay, and when you talk about content library, only you can edit the content. The students cannot edit. The students can only view the content. They cannot edit the content. Yeah, and then if the teacher only section, uh, teacher can edit. Students cannot view the content. So this is like your own private diary. This is your own private space uh, where you can edit, but student cannot see what actually you are editing here. Your own note taking. And whereas student notebook, uh, this is a private space for each student. Uh, this one, the students can edit their own contents. They can view, they can edit their own contents, but other students cannot. They can only edit their own notebook. But you as a teacher, you can also edit their notebook. So these are four sections. I we will explore together uh, later, yeah? but this is just some information for you to take note of. Okay, so let's go into Microsoft OneNote and uh, see what is Microsoft OneNote all about. So now you have these four sections as what is highlighted to you earlier, right? So you have these four sections. Now I'm going to click next okay now now this at this part is where you decide what are the sections you want for your student okay so we i just to give you a visual of uh idea what is notebook so notebook looks something like this la microsoft one note this is something that we are used to seeing the hard copy notebook where you have the pages and then you have each section so orange is one section, then the pink is one section, blue is one section, and then purple is one section. And under each of the sections, you have these own pages, right? So this is the notebook that we are very used to. Now, Microsoft OneNote uh, is a digital version of this, a digital version of this. So each of these section is actually this section. So this is your student name. Now, what is the section that you want? So you can even rename here. So maybe you're not handouts. I'm going to put maybe uh, class uh notes and uh, class notes and slides okay okay so you're gonna have uh, uh class notes slides okay now maybe this one uh what else you want to put here uh maybe you want to put uh maybe assignment because homework sounds more of a school uh, assignment okay and uh quizzes i'm gonna leave it homework i'm gonna delete so i only have three sections class notes slides assignment and then quizzes Right? And then you can add as many sessions as you want, right? So I'm going to click create. Okay, so now what happens is Microsoft Teams is now getting ready your Microsoft OneNote. So now you can see that Microsoft OneNote is uh, programming. And once it's ready, you will see a loading. Okay, you will see something like that. So every of your class student will get a copy of the notebook that means they will be able to see and you will be able to see the notebook so you can see that uh it's now loading okay now you will have a welcome page so you have welcome to uh class notebook right this is a welcome page right so this is one page by itself now um, you have to click this one here click this one here this is like a bookshelf right click this one here now you can see that this is the four uh sections that i mentioned about the collaboration space the content library the teacher only and this is your students private notebook so you can see all your students that you have already added into teams each of them have their own private notebook so you see all of you have your own private notebook all your names are here ah, that means you already joined teams using your code you have your own private notebook okay so we're going to explore one by one yeah so first thing is we're going to see that uh, we're going to go to uh, collaboration space here. Collaboration space is basically uh, a section where you can edit, your students can edit. Then you have the content library, all right? Content library, only you can edit. The students can only view and read, okay? And this is your own private space. This is your own private diary, right? So this is the three sections about, uh, and each of the students have their own notebook, okay? So now what we're going to do is I am going to click add section. Okay, add section. And I'm going to create a new section and I'm going to call this one note training. Okay, one note training. 
Okay, so now you see that I've created a new section here called OneNote Training. Now, under OneNote Training, this is their section. Huh? Now, under OneNote Training, I have a page, right? So, a page called Untitled Page. So, here I am going to put a title here called uh, OneNote Training Notes. Okay, OneNote Training Notes, right? So, now what happens is, if you see here, your page is immediately titled OneNote Training Notes. So you have a section OneNote Training and you have a page called OneNote Training Notes, right? So now you can keep on adding pages. Huh? So I'm going to click on the next page here. I can click Add Page here. Yeah. Now you see this is another untitled page. So now in this page, I am going to add maybe uh, Introduction to OneNote. Okay. So you can create as many pages as you want. So introduction to OneNote, see? So you have each page and each of it has its own title. So let's go to OneNote Training Notes. Now in OneNote Training Notes, you can type uh, any text. So for example, I'm going to type something now. This uh, OneNote is a really cool application to keep your Classroom, classroom notes. Ah, okay, so OneNote is a really cool application to keep your classroom notes, okay? So you can add a text, huh? you can add a text here. Now, on top of that, you can also add an image. You can insert, insert an image. So you can go to here, um, go to insert, okay? And then here you can file, you can uh, insert a picture here. So, for example, if I have a picture in my desktop, I'm going to add a picture from the file and I'm going to go to here. Maybe, okay, I'm going to add this picture. Right, now you see there is a nice uh, picture that I've added here. So, you can even uh, take it from your camera, you can even take it online. So, you see, OneNote is a really cool application to keep your classroom notes. So, you have a uh, picture here, right? So, now the next one is, I am going to do is, I am um, going to put insert link so now i'm going to go to insert here and i'm going to put insert link okay now insert link is i'm going to put a display text click here to read more on one note functions Click here to read more on OneNote functions. Then you have the address. Address is the link. So let me go to a website now. I'm going to go to a website and find on Microsoft OneNote. Okay, so maybe this one. Microsoft OneNote. Some information about Microsoft OneNote. So I'm going to uh, copy this URL. And I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to insert the URL. And I'm going to click insert. So I went and copy the website. Yeah, So I'm going to click insert. So now you can see that you can even put a text with a link in Microsoft OneNote. So now if your students were to click this, um, you are able to click this. So click here to read more on uh, OneNote functions. Now, the best part about this, you can also insert an audio, right? So let's say that you want to explain about Microsoft OneNote uh, function to your students. Now you can click audio. So you can go to audio here, click audio, all right and now you can see that the audio is recording whatever that you are teaching the uh, microsoft OneNote is recording for you so you can see that it's being recorded something is being recorded and it's is is looping that means it's recording once it's done uh, so you just speak you just speak as normal huh? whatever that you want to say you want to speak so it's audio recording your voice once you're done you click stop right so once you're stop you will notice that now OneNote is going to record your audio and now whatever that you were speaking earlier is captured in a mp3 file. So you see, you can move it here, mp3 file. So now you have the link and also you have the mp3 file here. So this is how easy it is. You can put a link, you can put a picture, you can put a text, okay, and then you can even put the audio file. And then here you can even move this around. You see, you can move this around anywhere so i can put it here if i want i can even put it here uh drag it and put it here if i want and it's very very big and yeah? the page is very big so it's not uh, one page you can even go down 
Ah, uh, you can even go as as far as below. And now you can even put an audio here. On top of that, you go to insert. You can even put emojis. Ah, uh, so maybe now if I say one note is a really cool application to keep your classroom notes. I'm going to go to an emoji here, and I'm going to put an emoji. So you can even put emojis as part of your uh, uh, classroom one note. On top of that, you see that this is a white color page. It's a white color page. So if you want to change your page color, you can also do that, right? So I can go to view, all right? Uh, and then you see page color. So click the page color. Um, you can change it to any color. You got blue, you got green, you got pink, you got yellow. So maybe I'm going to change it to yellow. So your entire page now changes to yellow color. See, so it's very interesting. You, you can click and change whatever color. Okay, maybe I want blue color, so I can change to blue color. If I want green color, I can change to uh, green color, right? Now, the best part is, let's say that I'm already done. I'm already done writing these notes, right? Uh, one room uh, classroom notes and all this. Now, you notice that this note is for me, right? And now, I want to distribute this page, this page which has all this information to my student, right? So if I go to, for example, Abdul Ghani, uh, I go to Ghani here and I put here classroom note slide and you see that his notebook is empty. There's nothing in Ghani's notebook. Now I have this note here, right? I have this nice page here. I want to distribute this to Abdul Ghani's notebook. That means all the students are going to get this note. Whatever that we just discussed, I want to put everything in their notebook. So how do I do this? It's quite simple. Uh, you have to go to distribute page. So you have to click this one here and then go to class notebook. The the Beside the audio, uh, you have this drop bar here. Go to class notebook. Okay, now you have these options here. So you got distribute page, distribute new section. So you want to distribute the entire section, you distribute the entire section. But in this case, I just want to distribute this page, this one training notes. So I'm going to click distribute page. Okay, now you can decide to distribute individually or you want to distribute to a specific group of students. Uh, it's up to you. But if you want to distribute to all, all students that has the notebook, then I'm going to put this one, distribute page. Distribute page. And it's going to come out a loading that looks something like this. And it's going to ask you where you want to distribute because your student's notebook got three sections assignment, class note slides, and quizzes. So you have to choose which section you want this page to be distributed. So I'm going to say I want to choose class note slide. Uh, so I want this page to be distributed in this section of my student's notebook. So I'm going to click this class note slide and you see there's a button called distribute, distribute. So now if I click distribute, one note is going to distribute that page to my student. So you can see that it's loading now. Um, here there's a button that is loading. Okay, now you will see that it's distributing to your students. How many percent is completed, right? So you just have to wait for a short while and once it's completed, uh, it will notify you that it's completed. So you can see that it's now 38% completed. So every single student in your class is going to get that page that you just created. This, this simple one note training notes that I just done, every single student in your class is going to get that. So now you have 76% and now it's already done. Okay, so how do I check? I go back to here. And I go and check my student's notebook. So let me go to Abdul Ghani's notebook just now. So this is Ghani's notebook. So I'm going to click classroom slides. This is the part that I distribute earlier. So click this one. And now you can see the training and uh, the note page that you created earlier is already in Abdul Ghani's notebook. See how simple and easy it is. Now if I go to Yifa and I click her classroom note slides, I see that she also has the same page, one note, training notes. Every of your student also has. So let's go to Sukme and then you should go to classroom slides and you can see that she also has the page, one training notes. So this is how easy it is to distribute notes to your students, right? So now you even have something called uh, collaboration space. So if you have collaboration space, using the collaboration space, 
right? So this is a space uh, for you to actually uh, do work collaboratively. That means all your students, like how we practice using um, the word document in Teams is a similar function here. Uh, so they can collaborate and they can edit a document together. They can write anything together. So for this one, usually what I will do is I will break them according to group. So maybe collaboration space, I'm going to put add page here and I'm going to put group one. Okay, so this is group one page. Okay, and then the next one I am going to put for group two. Okay, group two. Group two page. Okay, and then here you can notice that now your class is divided. So you, if you divide the students according to group, you can tell, okay, group one, go and edit this document. Group two, go and edit this document. So while they are doing the work collaboratively, uh, maybe in some assignments or quiz or some activities that you are giving them to do, um, you are able to monitor them. And once they have done, you can even distribute the page. Let's say group two, you want to distribute to specific team, uh, members in group two, you can distribute to individual distribution. Okay, and then it will tell you, uh, it will ask you who is the one that you want to distribute specifically. So you need to select like, who is group two members. Okay, maybe Gani and then Sukme is group two and then uh, uh, thing is uh, group two also. So you can click next. This is how easy it is to have. So remember collaboration space is anyone can edit. Uh, you as a teacher can edit, your students can edit. So once you edit, you can even post the page here. So content library, okay, is the part where you can even upload the slides. So if you have any slides here, you can even upload the slides. So you have content library. This is the, the page here for that, right? So now if you want to upload any slides or document, you can even insert. So for example, I'm going to insert a file, insert a file attachment, and I am going to go to a specific Microsoft Word document that I have. Okay, so now you have uh, described what you can see. This is the file that is going to be loaded. Oh, sorry, this one you have to clean this page first. Huh? So maybe it's better to start a new page. Add page, or maybe class, class notes. Okay, now what you can do is you can either insert the file, all right? But if you insert the file, it won't look very pleasant lah, because it's going to look something like this. Okay, so if I just insert the file, it's just going to be something like this, right? So it doesn't look very nice and it looks a bit boring. So what you can do is, you can actually go to, um, oops, sorry. So you can actually go to your Word document that you want to uh, open the Word document and see whatever contents that you have inside there and you copy paste, copy paste the contents and then you copy the contents from your Word file and come and paste it inside there uh, so that it looks a bit better. Lah. But this one is very useful if you have text. I uh, have entire text there. So you can just copy and paste the entire text here, right? So you can see that, describe what you can see, and then you can insert the picture here uh, of what the activity that we did earlier. So if you have a large amount of text, you can just copy the entire text and you can just paste it inside. Otherwise, your student can just double click this and they can open the document. They can download and open. So this is um, how you can distribute uh, content library. Content library means that only you can edit, your students cannot edit. So this is very useful content library for classroom notes. So if you have any notes that you want your student to read and you don't want them to edit, then you put it under content library. So once you put under content library, uh, you don't forget that uh, your student, eh, so under content library, your students can access. Uh, they can access, but they cannot edit. They can only read whatever that you have done. Okay. So, uh, is there any questions on OneNote? I think I'm more or less uh, done with uh, Microsoft OneNote. Do you all have any questions on this? Uh, those of uh, lecturers who are drawing here, uh, who, who requires drawing function, you can even draw. So, you go to uh, insert, you have draw function. Okay, some of you, maybe you're writing some formulas or anything, you're teaching some science or maths formulas or what. Uh, you can go to draw. And then you even have the draw function. So you have the pencil and you have different types of font. So you can draw, you can draw. And then you have the erase uh, function here, right? You even have highlighters, so you can even highlight. So there are many, many types of options for you here. 
Okay, now you can even have this uh, drawing option. So uh, you got a pencil and then you have the different types of colors here. Okay, if you don't like these colors, there are many other colors here. So this is the drawing function. Okay, everything can be done uh, within Microsoft OneNote. Okay, any questions on Microsoft OneNote? Um, I've already done on Microsoft OneNote. Yep, uh, see you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Donny, uh, I want to ask, uh, because I have been using uh, OneNote okay. um, in my laptop, so I wonder if um, I can transfer my notes from my laptop OneNote to the class note here? Is it possible? Uh, uh, it's not possible because why? When you, when you create your themes, right, you go to generally create your themes, you have to go to class notebook here. Uh, and then you have to create a notebook. But there is another option that you can do that. Let's say that if I go to general here, I go to general here, go to class notebook, right? Uh, set up one class notebook here. You can try this one from existing notebook content and okay. see whether it works for you. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Means and, that uh, the class note and the, uh, the one note in my laptop is not linked, right? No, it's linked actually. If it's one note, that uh, I mean, at the moment it's not linked. But when you uh, transfer it uh, to here, then it's going to be online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, then it's linked. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on uh, one note? One note is very easy, lah. Huh? Very easy and very very um, straightforward. Now, if you all want to change the section color, you can also change. Huh? Maybe if you don't like this uh, this color, let's say if I go back to class one node. So each time you want to access your class one node, go to general, click class one node. Now let's see that this one node training, uh, one node training, you don't like this color. Uh, this color maybe looks a bit ugly. Uh, uh, you, you, you don't like this color. Now you just uh, right click and then you can put section color. Uh, so now you can change the color. So I want it maybe purple. Okay, maybe I want it. Uh, maybe lemon color, or maybe if I want it, uh, 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 in blue color. So you can even change uh, the color section as you want. Okay. Uh, final call for one note. Any other questions? Uh, because I think I'm done ready with uh, Microsoft One Note. Nana, no questions, ah. Uh? Okay, no questions. No question is good. Lah, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay, so now uh, let's learn uh, another new application. Okay, this application is called uh, Microsoft Sway. Okay, Microsoft Sway. Okay, now Microsoft Sway is a very, very nice and interesting, cool application. Okay, let me share the screen for you this. Okay, so this is Microsoft Sway. So Microsoft Sway is actually, uh, when we did the survey this morning, I noticed that uh, many of you have not used uh, Microsoft Sway. Uh, uh, many of you are not familiar with Microsoft Sway. And uh, quite a number of you are actually interested to learn about Microsoft Sway. So um, one of the things I, 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 I've done uh, when I did Microsoft Suite training for my students and also for many other lecturers, uh, they have forgotten what is Microsoft PowerPoint because Sway is so convenient and Sway is so easy to use and it's very interesting to use. Okay, so we're going to explore what is Microsoft Sway uh, together eh, and see what is some of the functionalities of Microsoft um, Sway. So first thing is, let's see a short video about how is Microsoft Sway used in a classroom. Uh, how is Microsoft Sway used in the classroom? So let's see a very short video on this. The way that I would see success in using technology in schools goes beyond just using the technology. We've been in small bits trying to push out Office apps to students to be able to use. And it was a post online that I had seen that said, check out this new software, and it was Sway. 
a new, exciting, dynamic way to present information. You hear this little murmur in the background, like, I've never seen that. What is it? He's just sliding through. There's a video built in. And so there are a lot of just nuances to it that made it really exciting to share with others. It's a really powerful tool for synthesizing or comparing ideas because students have so much flexibility in the layout. It gives them a chance to individualize their thoughts and yet follow um, a curriculum base. We've used Sways for business. We've used Sways for English comp finals. In fact, we have a group of seniors, one group of seniors today that are delivering their thesis in Sway. Pretty much whenever I have an opportunity to use Sway for a presentation within class, I would definitely use Sway because it's my go-to. Just because it's so much easier to use than many other presentation software and because you can get things done so much quicker. I'm able to put together a presentation in maybe 30 minutes or an hour so I can really focus on my delivery rather than what people will be looking at on the screen because I know Sway's got it covered. That's the type of comment that we want to hear from students because then they're focusing more on content and they're learning that content because they're spending less time on the design. Having students share or collaborate on a Sway is so easy. We have shown it to students who have never used it before and in minutes they're sharing with their peers and working together on the same active document. Well, I love that it's cloud-based, so I can access it from anywhere. I can pull it up on my phone, from another computer. If my phone dies, I can use someone else's phone, someone else's computer. As we move towards one-to-one -one technology for our student population, Sway seems to provide that opportunity to stretch their thinking, to use some, and feel like it will give them an edge as they move into a college or university. Okay, so this is about Microsoft Sway, yeah? So, are you all interested to learn about Microsoft Sway after watching the video? Yes. <laughs> interested, ah? Huh? Okay. But only one person interested, ah? Huh? The rest not interested. <laughs> yes, uh, so tell me also yes, ah? Huh? Yes, okay. So let's uh, try to access Microsoft Sway. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so to access Microsoft Sway, you have to go to Microsoft Office Online. So go back to your Microsoft Office Online. Uh, so you have uh, uh, into here UM portal. Uh, sorry, uh, Office 365 under UM. Yeah? And then inside here, you go to uh, here and go to Sway. Click Sway. Okay, now you're under Sway, uh, you're going to click New Blank Sway. Okay, for this activity, uh, can we do this together? Uh, that means uh, we, we, we will do this activity and then you're going to share the link. Huh? You're going to share the link here uh, for the documentation also for us. Huh? That, that means there is some output from uh, the training today. Okay, so uh, just follow closely and you are going to create your own Sway. Uh, you're going to create your own sway and then you're going to share the link later in the chat uh, so for all of us to see what you have created together uh. so to just give you a idea about what sway can do um, you can i'm going to share this link to you in this page here okay let me let me share the link to you in the chat so now when you click this uh link in the chat right ah yeah Okay, so now you can see that this is something that I designed. Uh, this is something that I designed. Uh, this is what we call a Microsoft Sway. A Microsoft Sway. So you can see that I did a presentation. Where is a very quick one? How to turn a teacher into a one note ninja. Ah, so what happens here? So you put a nice background at the back. So what happens? The journey begins. So you have a nice picture of the ninja here. Okay, and then you can put all aspiring one note ninjas must begin the journey. So you can put a text here. Okay, and then now you have a picture and then you have a text here. Okay, and then on top of that, you see there is a picture. So you, you can click this picture, you can zoom in and see, okay, what is this all about? Okay, and then here you can even tilt it uh, the other way. So it makes it very really nice to read. Now you can easily integrate a voice note inside. You can integrate a, a text inside. You can even make the text even bigger. 
um, you have some multiple pictures you can put inside and you can put multiple uh, YouTube videos, all these are videos, you can put all the videos together inside. Uh, now you can put a picture here, you can put a picture here, you can put a picture here. Now you can even have a stack up picture like this. So here when you click this, a picture that flips like this. So you see you can nicely flip together like this. Okay, so this is what Microsoft uh, Sui can do. So this is a presentation under Microsoft Sui. See, very, very nice and very, very interesting. So this is why when I say, when I teach uh, the students and lecturers, they never use PowerPoint a day. All of them use Microsoft Suite because it's so convenient and so easy. You might think this is very hard to do. Huh? It's actually not very hard. This is very easy to do. Okay, so let's learn together how to do it. Yeah. So we all will do together. Then you're going to share your Suite. Yeah? I already shared my Suite in the chat. So after this, you will do together and then you will share your Suite in the chat. Okay, so now let's go to Microsoft Suite. So click new blank Suite new blank suite okay so now you notice that this is the first card huh? this is the first card this is usually your title card huh? your title card uh, so i'm going to give my title card a name so here that is the title of your suite huh? so in this case i'm going to put who am i ah so you're going to put who am i so this is your title okay so um, emphasize is basically you bold it lah, so you can uh, highlight this whole thing and then you can bold it who am i right accent is italic lah. this is very weird lah because uh sway ah, the uh, in uh, word and powerpoint we call it bold bold but here they put emphasize then here we say italic but here they put accent so very weird lah i already told to microsoft but it still never changed lah maybe they don't want to listen to me lah but never mind lah okay so this is bold okay who am i all right so now here you can add a background uh, you can add a background so you can click a background okay now when you click a background here uh there are two choices one you can suggest you can click a drop down here you can upload any image that you have in your computer so for example who am i if you have a picture of yourself you can upload uh, in my device click my device and you can upload your picture here otherwise uh, you can straight away search here search in sources search in sources so i'm just going to click who am i you're going to search through the search engine and microsoft sway is going to give you some suggestions you see there are some pictures here who am i Okay, so I'm going to put maybe this picture, this picture here. So click this one and click add. add. Okay, so now you have a picture of this. Who am I? And you have a picture. So now I want to add more cards, more cards. Okay, now before that, you have already added a picture. You will see here on your top right, there is focus points. Focus point is not the spectacle, uh, not the spectacle shop focus point. Uh. This one is the sway. So click focus point. Uh, now, here you can ask Sway to focus which one you want. You want to focus on the entire image or you want to focus on specifically certain parts. So you can choose which one you want. Okay. Otherwise, you can just leave it like that. Lah. All right. Now I'm going to add more card. So click the plus sign. Now here you have different cards. You can add a heading card. You can add a text card, you can add image, you can add a stack, and then you got even uh, media, you can even add a video, audio, okay? So let's go to suggested first, All right? We are going to add three cards. So you have to add three heading cards, three heading cards, okay? So one, okay, I'm going to click the plus sign again, two, another heading card, I'm going to click the plus sign again, three. So you got three heading cards, one, two, and three. So give the first title, uh, first title of your heading card. Okay, so now the, maybe the first title, I'm going to put where uh, do I live? Where do I live? So I'm going to bold this. Okay, now the next card, I'm going to put uh, maybe uh, where do I live? Okay, what is uh, another one? Uh, what do I love? What do I love? Okay, so you can bold this. All right, now the next uh, level card, you can put uh, what have I learned? 
Okay, so you emphasize. So you have three cards. Where do I live? What do I love? What have I learned? Okay, now let's look at the first card. So this you have a background. Click the background here. Now you have an option whether you want to select an image or a video. So if you have an image, you can search for the image. But in this case, where do I live? I want to try a video. I want to put a video. So I'm going to go into videos. Okay. And maybe I am going to search for a picture of a uh, condominium, for example. Any condominium, any condominium uh, video. Okay, if you have a proper video, then you put a proper video. Otherwise, you can just uh, put, uh, find a video here. Okay, so you find for condo, looking for suggestions. Ah, so you have some uh, nice uh, video here. So maybe I am going to put this uh, video. So click this one and click add. So you have the video here. Now in here, you will see that uh, there are three options here. This is the small one. Okay, this is a medium size. This is the big size. So I'm going to put big. That means the video in your presentation is going to be big, right? So you can change the size according to here, right? So maybe I am going to put a text here to describe this video. So where do I live? I have a video here. So I, maybe I'm going to put here, I live in uh, section 17, uh, Petaling Jaya, for example. Okay, I live in section 17, Petaling Jaya. So you want to bold this, right? I live in section 17. So now where do I live here? This is still an empty image. So maybe you want to put a picture of a condominium here. Okay, maybe I want to add this picture. Okay, so where do I live? I have a picture here. Now I also have a video, okay, to explain um, uh, an example of the condominium that I am. Okay, so now what do I love? What do I love? So what do I love? You can put here, uh, click an image here and put what do I love? Okay. Ah, so maybe I'm going to put this image here. So what do I love? I'm going to put this image here. Now I'm going to create three cards, three cards on what do I love? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a card here and I'm going to put image card. One, two, three, three image card. So now you have to describe what is the thing that you love to do. What do I love? You have the, the image. Now you have created three different image. So you have to describe what do I love. Okay, so maybe you can put I love reading. Okay, you can hold it. I love reading. Now you can find an image under reading. So find a, a image of reading here. So maybe I love reading. Ah, so maybe this is a nice image. So I'm going to put here. Okay, now next one, what? I love reading. I love eating burgers. Okay, I love eating burgers. So you can put emphasize. Now I'm going to click an image and find for burgers. Ah, so there's a nice image of burger here. Getting lunch time ready lah. Huh? So just nice. Okay, and then the last one is I love my dog for example okay so you find a, a picture of a dog here ah let's see whether my dog is here or not. ah there got my picture of my dog here the black fellow looks exactly like him right so you can put big so now you have three pictures what you can do is you can take this one then take this Two, and then you can take this three. So all three pictures are ticked together, right? Now you see there is an option called group. Group. Click group. Now you can even format how you want your picture to be displayed. You want it to be in stack, means it comes one after the other, or you want it to be in grid, that means all your picture is going to be in grid, or you want it to be in slideshow. So you can select what format you want. So in this case, I'm going to put stack, okay, stack, okay, so I'm going to click stack, so it's done, 
right? So you have a uh, picture that is done here. Okay, now what have I learned? The last one, I'm going to click a background here and put uh, what have I learned? Okay, so anything, what have I learned? Any nice picture here? Let me, let me change the keyboard here, learning. So this you can search in, in Bing. Uh, this is Bing search engine. If you don't have the image that you want, then you can upload it into your computer. So what have I learned? And you can add an image here, for example, a text. Text. So today, I have, today I have learned about Microsoft. It is a really cool application, and I and I simply love it. Ah, something like this. So you put a text here. Today I've learned about Microsoft Suite. It is a really cool application. I simply love it. So now at the top here, who am I, right? Um, you might want to create another card here to give some description about yourself. Okay, so who am I? So maybe you can put my name is I am a senior lecturer at the uh, Faculty of Education uh, University. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing a lecture at the Faculty of Education, University of Malaya. So you can give some very short um, introduction, uh, uh, short description. So now I can say that more or less my sway is more or less ready, right? So how does it look like? How does my sway look like? So now you can go and click play. Click play. Ah, so this is how your sui looks like. You see, so very fast, I've already created a presentation. And you see, who am I? So there's a nice picture here. And you see the picture, so it's moving. Uh, it's a motion uh, kind of picture, you see. Slowly, it's moving. And then here, you can skip here and say, okay, uh, my name is Donnie Adams, okay? I'm a senior lecturer at faculty. Okay, where do I live? Uh, so there's a picture of my condominium. See, it's also a moving picture. And then here, I can even play a video. Uh, so I can play a video of my uh, condominium, for example. Ah, uh, so you can describe. You can describe. I've seen a lot of condo make. <clears throat> okay, so maybe. Um, do you all hear any sound just now during the video? Do you all hear any sound? Yes. Ah, yeah, it got sound, right? Yeah. So you can. Overs and so they you have play the video. Sound. You play the video and see what sound, right? And then you go to the next one. Okay, what do I love? So you have a nice package, a nice picture here. And then here, you also have a picture of what do I love, you see? So this is what I have. I So you can describe, I love reading. Okay, I love eating burger. Uh, then I love my dog. Ah, uh, So for example, so you can even make it big. You can even make it big and then you can flip through like this. Okay, and then the next one, you have what have I learned? Okay, so today I've learned about Microsoft Sway. It's a really cool application as you see? Uh, Ani says, uh, suggested feature in Sway, free copyright. Yes, all this is under uh, Bing. Uh, under the Bing one, is most of them is uh, free of uh, copyright image. Lah. So you can search from there. It's not a problem. Okay, so you can see that all the image is here. See, very nice. Uh, very fast you can create. So now if you want to edit, you click edit again. And you can see that all these are here. So you can just edit so fast you can create a microsoft suite see how simple and so easy it is to create microsoft suite now uh, you see that this is the design this is the layout that i have right so it's going from left to right okay and you've got some uh, red color with gray color design now if you don't like this design what you can do you can go to design okay click design and then you can go to styles styles uh, so now you can even change if you just want it to be in PowerPoint slide it's going to just be PowerPoint slide like this one. Okay, but if I don't want PowerPoint slide, I want to go vertical top down. 
also can. So I click vertical top down. So you can click play and see what happens. You go top down now. Uh, now this is top down. Uh, top down looks much more better. Right? So you see, let's top down. Very, very nice and very, very uh, professional. Okay, then you click edit. Now let's say if you don't like this style, uh, this style, the red color and all this, you don't like it uh, very much, right? So you can even customize. You see, there's many customize. You can click this and you see that it customize for you. Uh, black and white. See, very beautiful and nice. Or you want to put it this color, um, you can also put it in this color. See, now it's become a bit purplish color here. Okay, now you can even change the font color also. If you don't like this font color, so you can see it changed to this color or you want uh, to change this color. Uh, so you can even change it to this color, you see. So it, it has a background here. So you can play around and see what design you want. Sway will automatically design for you. And if you really, really don't like this, uh, the easiest part is you can click Remix. Remix. Uh, so you see Remix, what happens? Sway automatically designs for you. So you click again Remix. Sway designs for you a new design. See, totally new. See, this one is even more better. So if I click play, uh, so you have who am I? Okay, then you have a nice text here. Then you have a nice image here. You have your video here. What do I love? Oh, so this is nice. The picture is even more bigger. And then you see what have I learned? See, so simple and so nice. If you don't like this design, just click remix again. Oh, so now it changes to left and right. So you click remix again. Uh, now you have a totally new design. See, who am I? Okay, now it goes to this. See, so simple and so nice. So this is what I teach my students. Lah. I teach my students and I, I teach many of the lecturers. And even if I go for conferences, I also uh, present using Microsoft Suite. But you need to take note that uh, the Microsoft Suite needs internet access. Uh, you must have connection to internet then you can use Microsoft Suite, not like PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint, you can not have internet and you can still present uh, if you go for conference. Uh, uh, but uh, Suite, you need to have internet connection. So the computer that you're dialing in uh, needs to have internet connection, then you can open your Microsoft Suite and start presenting. So there is so simple. You just click Remix, you can change to different, different design, different, different design, and it makes your uh, uh, presentation really, really professional and nice okay so this is about microsoft sway so in the video that you saw earlier that is why they say that microsoft sway uh, the emphasis is on the content rather than the design and style because when you do powerpoint you waste a lot of time about designing or what type of font what color what size you know and you waste time about adjusting the image and all this so a lot of time is wasted for uh, powerpoint Whereas for Microsoft Sway, you just have to edit your, your storyline like this, everything, and then uh, it will design for you uh, like this so that you can straight away uh, start and uh, focus on the presentation rather than uh, worry about how it looks like, the styling, the form, you know, the, 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 the format and all this. So everything is designed nicely for you. Okay, so you all have any questions about Microsoft Sway? Any questions uh, you need to clarify? Anything that you don't understand about Microsoft Sway? Can it, can it be exported to other formats, for example, PDF or PowerPoint? Can. Uh, if you want to export to other format, you click this one, the three dots here. Okay. And then you click export. Right. So now you can choose the format you want to export, Word, PDF or or close so i'm going to export to pdf so you can see i'm exporting your pdf your sway to pdf okay so just give it some time and see that it's going to export okay now it's already done so now i click the document and then you can see that it's already exported here see so nice so professional and everything is already documented uh, but it's not going to look exactly the same as in sway lah, because sway is very 3d -ish, but you get the essence of your presentation in sway is that okay, Azizi? Uh, yes, thanks. Okay, so 
Yes, uh, Nodini, you say, can we record our voice using Sway? Can. So you go and, uh, okay, like this, uh, click the, the card here, and then you have media. Media, media, and then click audio. Audio, insert audio card. Click audio. Uh, now, you can record. So if you have an MP3, you can put the MP3 inside here. Okay, if you don't have the MP3 file, then you can just record. So some presentations are, you can put background music, you know, background music. So put some nice background music. So people also hear, so they also feel very relaxed. Like they hear the music, you know, they hear your presentation. Of course, your presentation is important, lah, not the music. Lah, but the music is more like a background noise, lah, not noise, background music. So it's soothing. So you can even put that. So when your sway is played, lah, then the music is also there, you know, so it's very nice. Or if you want to, uh, do this as teaching and learning, you can record. Uh, you can record so your students will have the audio file. So they can click on the audio file, they can listen or oh, what my lecturer is uh, talking. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, another thing is you can share. You can share your sphere. So if you click share, share, click share. All right. So here you can see uh, anyone with a link. So, anyone with a link, make sure it's view, uh, don't click edit. Edit, then people can edit your suite. So, anyone with a link, invite people to view, and then you click copy. Copy this one. Okay, now you can put it into the chat box. Okay, put it into the chat box in uh, Teams. So, when you click this one, you are able to go and view my Microsoft suite. So, you see, it looks something like this. Okay, this is the edit portion, but you'll be able to see something like this. Okay, so any of you managed to do the sway? Can you share your sway? Anyone managed to do a very quick sway, something like this? You can start sharing. Click the share button and share the link into the chat. Anyone manage to do? You want to share? Ah, Azizi has done something. Let's see what Azizi has done. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, so who you have? Who am I? All right. Oh, where do I live? Wow, nice lah. This one is like some very like black and white, very traditional, this one, okay, and then, what do I love, yes, okay, wow, then you got motorbike there, nice, okay, and then you love reading, tapi tak nampak sangat lah, I think there's something wrong with the adjustment, maybe Azizi, you click remix, um, Sway will try to adjust it for you, huh? and then you have gardening, very nice, okay, and then what have I learned, okay, very nice, so very nice, this is a sample Sway, yeah, done by Azizi, Okay, anyone else want to share? Any other sways that uh, we have here? So you can see that it's very 3D, huh? what Azizi has shared also is very nice, very, very 3D kind of uh, uh, sway here. Very nice. So even you do presentation like this, so nice, you know, your student all will be like, wow, what is this, you know? Uh, my lecturer is now 21st century. Ah, so now you see, uh, Siuha has shared on essential oils okay let's go to this way and see how to use essential oils wow see very nice so you see topically okay then there's a, even an audio file there's even an audio file here and then there's even a video here how to safely effectively use essential oils okay so you have some pictures here as well you have a video here okay then you have another picture here and then you have another video see so far, sir, uh, it's created, it's, it's less than, uh, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you already created a brand new sway. If you compare to PowerPoint, how long are you going to take? You're going to take a lot of time to create a PowerPoint. Whereas Microsoft Sway, you can do things very, very fast because you are focusing on the content, uh, not so much on the format. Sway will help you to adjust the format. Okay. Any other, any other things, uh, any, uh, any other sharing?
anyone else want to share their swing? So we have two samples here. One from Azizi, one from Siwa. Uh, those of you who want to, let's say if you have a PowerPoint, uh, and now you want to convert that PowerPoint into Microsoft Suite. Uh, is it possible? Let's say if you already have a PowerPoint and I want to convert that PowerPoint into Suite. Can we do that? So you can do that. Huh? It's not a problem. Huh? So you go to Microsoft Suite, right? So you, you, earlier when we go to Microsoft Suite, we put this one, new blank Suite, right? But in this case, this time, I am going to put start from a document. That means I already have a PowerPoint slide. So click start from a document. And now I'm going to upload my PowerPoint. Let's say this is my PowerPoint slide. Oh, oh, oh. So the document must be less than 20 MB. Uh, this slide has a lot of uh, has a lot of uh, pictures and all this. So that's why it, it takes a, a lot of time. Uh, it's more than 20 MB. Uh. It's 47 MB. So it's 47 MB. So you cannot upload. So the file, if you want to start from a, a PowerPoint, uh, it must be within 20 MB. Otherwise, it's not uh, possible to start from a PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, maybe try this one. Let me see. Try this one. So I have another PowerPoint here. Okay, so this is 1.8 MB. Okay, so just a moment. So you can see that Sway is importing the PowerPoint. Ah, so now you can see that uh, this is the original PowerPoint. Huh? Let me show you how the original PowerPoint look like. Okay, this is how the original PowerPoint look like. Yeah? Let's share, share with you. Just a moment. Uh, I need to open the file. Ah, now you see this one. This is the original PowerPoint. See how it looks like? Do you know him? Ah, so, and then I have this one. This is my PowerPoint, uh, for example. Uh, I already did it in PowerPoint. Okay, so you have this. This one is an activity. Uh, the activity that I do, this is... Uh, treasure hunt. Like. I do treasure hunt with my class. <laughs> so actually the whole treasure hunt is actually based on uh, the learning. Uh. It's not a game. Like. It's a game actually. They have to do a treasure hunt, but it's based on the course content. So they have to uh, to, to uh, do a treasure hunt and learn along the way. So this is something that I teach my class. Like. So I like to do all this. Like. I do all this. On this. So you have this PowerPoint. So they, they, uh, there's a storyline here. So this is how the PowerPoint looks like. Uh, but now if I convert it to Sway, uh, it looks something like this. So treasure hunt, you see? So you have a storyline, you see? So whatever I have in my PowerPoint is actually now just converted into uh, Microsoft Sway. See? So simple, right? So you can even uh, do this. Uh, so if you don't like this uh, format, you can even click uh, design. You can go to styles and you can even click remix. Okay. And you can see that it's going to change the format for you. Uh, this is how you can do it. Okay. So you can even, uh, this one is nicer. See, this one is more nicer. So you have, do you know him? Okay. Then you have the picture here. Okay. And then you have this one. So this is more nicer, right? This is a, a another webinar. La. This one is another, is, a, is another, this one. So it's a gamified, gamified learning, they call it. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is about Microsoft Suite. Uh, do you all have uh, any questions on Microsoft Swing? I am more or less done with uh, module of Swing. Any questions? No questions, nah. Maybe everyone hungry already. <laughs> okay, so I think if there's no more questions, then we will break for lunch. Okay, and then we will come back at 2 o'clock. Right, we will come back at 2 o'clock uh, for the next session. Right? Uh, template 1, uh, template 2, potong. Storyboard dah potong. Lagi? Nak lagi? Alright. Dr. Doni? Yep, Anis. Okay. Okay, so we're going to break for one hour and we will meet at 2 p.m.
Okay, so what the next uh, gonna do to to 4 p.m. Dr. Doni? Maybe the some next... briefing to the participant before they leave for the lunch. Okay, the next part we are going to explore uh, what other third party applications that we can use, especially for uh, creative online teaching. Uh, so there are many other applications that we're going to experiment on. Uh, what other applications that you can use, especially for creative online teaching. So I've showed you a little bit about Teams, OneNote, um, Sway and all this. But in the afternoon session, we're going to see what other applications that you can use to complement your teaching. So not just for online teaching, you can also use the application for hybrid uh, in class also. Right. So I will show you that. So if you're interested, you can stay on uh, for the afternoon session. That will be in the afternoon. All right. OK, Dr. Roni, see you at 2 p.m. All right, for the participant, the link for the attendance and the link for the uh, feedback form as well will be given at the second part of the webinar at 2 p.m. All right, happy lunch, everyone. Thank you. All right, bye. Happy bye. lunch. Okay, thank you, Dr. Thank bye. you.